Antonio owed him and gave me my 40 quid. Yeah. So I thought I'd go to Captain Park this afternoon, Porky. You want to come with? I'll pay all the excess. Yeah, I think I might, man. Yeah, yeah, wait for me for a while, too, and I'll come and all. He's a changed up. Yeah. You know, I can't stand these ones that turn up on a Saturday. Then then he goes in leather jackets. Scruffy, breeding artists from Chelsea with birds that look like East End halls. Well, what do you expect? It's a portable market. Anyway, it's pushing up the price of Siamese back scratches, isn't it? Siamese. Hey, let's have a look. Secret drinker. Jimmy, I've tempted with a turtle for you. What? Oh, go away. You stink of onions. Oh, ain't it nice? No. Anyway, I'm not going to no party tonight. I've got to help my mum make up 20 reels by Monday. Oh, no, you go on your own. But if you were a man, you'd have to come out and help. Well, I ain't a man, and I'm going to enjoy myself before I marry you. Here you are, then. Three points. Right, yes, and here's your three and a good change. Lovely. Good on you. Come on, Emily, where you been? Oh, I've been up there. I've been hanging about. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. 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 Look after yourself. Ta-da, then. Cheers. Cheers. Don't catch it. Come on, Keith. Yeah. It's all gobblers. More like four quid wrapped around a toilet roll. <laughs> That mob's from Oxton, from working a free car trick in the market. What, what, find the lady? Yeah. Cool, I thought they went up, went up with Dickens. Not likely. Yeah. They're off Jamaica around here, and sadly trying to find the lady. <laughs> yeah, well, that mob don't need any telling where to find the ladies on this map. <laughs> I'm round the other bar. No, I'm looking for my friend. Oh, I don't give a damn who you're looking for. Round the other bar if you want a drink. I'll give me a drink. No, man. look, man, just don't push it. Round, do you mind? Out, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Down the other bar. All right. Yeah. Uh, Hello, you. Colour bar in Notting Hill. Well, it ain't. Well, I can't serve black in this bar. I'd miss all, lose all my respectable customers. You say respectable, Jimmy. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Tap. Lord help us, look who's just blown in. The wickedest couple in not in Dow, Mr. One a day. Now nah, leave off, Porky. He won't be happy until he's nicked one, and today it could be you. Nah, please. Give us the same one. Now, I told you, Mob, to keep up this manner. If I see you on this manner again, I'll do the lot of you for sus. Keep your villainy to Oxton. With enough villains here as it is. Without immigrants, do you understand? Keep off my manner. So you think that's clever, do you? But I ain't done nothing, Gov. I've got my barrow outside. I've just pushed it out of the stable with six cases of... Uh, take that smile off your face or I'll wipe it off for you. I should think so. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, Get him out of here. You're not getting out of here. Get out of it, all of you. Get out of here. I ain't done nothing. You've knocked out the wickedest cop on the manor. He ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing. What have you got? It's about two ton of polish down there. You How long did you get? Six months. Uh, two haircuts and a shave and you'll be out. Not worth coming in for. How do you mean? Have you been in before? No. What did you get done for? I ain't done nothing much. I pushed the cop where I thought was going to hit me. What's your name? Danny Lee. Where'd you come from? Not in York. Any relation to Brittany Lee? Yeah, that's my old lady. Oh, fancy that. And you ain't been in prison before? Oh, you're about the only one in the family that ain't. I know Brit well. Wonder she didn't straighten out the copper for you. She's red hot at that caper. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to ask you was... Oh, when so I, I was see... saying, crooked coppers. The public have got no idea what's going on. Now, take me, for instance. I was standing at the bus stop place itself and just... Yeah, I know you mean. And a woman copper comes up and does me for loitering with intent to pick pockets. A woman, my you. Yeah. So I says to the magistrate, it's a pity the police don't spend more time trying to find the money for the great train robbery. I spent there, found half of it, but now I carved it up between them. <laughs> so they read out my previous. I've done 18 cons for the wheels, ain't I? Have you? Yeah, so the magistrate says to me, you seem to spend half your life at the bus stop, number 15, waiting to pick people's pockets. It would have been more profitable if you had got a job as a bus conductor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he seemed to think that was funny. Well, it ain't bad, is it? So he says to me, I'm going to give you a chance. You'll go to prison for the month. Uh, how long is it before I can... Yeah, well, it won't be long now. You don't shut up, I'll jam these down your throat, you big mouth mug. Oh, charming. Now shut your trap. Now, son, what have you been trying to ask big mouth? Well... How long is it before I can see my girl? She's in the family way and I'm worried about her. Well, not for a month, son. 
But tomorrow morning, make an application to the governor for a special visit. Explain the circumstances. You, you might get a special visit. Tell him you was getting married. He's very religious. Thanks, mate. I'll do that. How long do you get? 30 years. 30, Stretch? You must be one of the train robbers. Right. Sorry, Governor, for opening up my trap. I didn't know. I mean, I always get a bit excited when I'm going to the lift. I'm all right once I'm inside. 30 years. Well, we're getting nearer. The Hotel Cecil. And you don't pay no bills. And the next one. One on to you, Mr. Feeney. Oh, he's been here before when I showed him the door. Then I wondered how long it would be before he would be back with a ten for his whack. One to you, sir, and one, one on to me. Wherever they roam, our pigeons come back home. You would think it was time that they knew that this prison is the place where they terminate their race. One to me, sir, and one on to you. All right, turn out your pockets and give me valuables, Mr. Morgan. Yep. Three bob, three and a tenner. Four bob, four and a tenner. Right. Come around, sign here for your money and valuables. Four and a tenner, correct? Uh, when you uh, sign, get in there, throw out your clothes and pick up a blanket. Yep. Next one. Right, onto the scales. Oh. Brooke, 240 pounds, Mr. Johnson. Right, Mr. Morgan. I go through that door, get into the bar. Come on, to you, Mr. Feeney. Right, Mr. Morgan. Name? Danny Leaker. Sentence? Six months, Captain. Three years convictions? None, Captain. Offence? Assault on a copper, Captain. Tough guy, eh? No, Gov, I was pushing my barrel along the market like, and a copper pushed me, so I put one on him. They pushed me in here, and I'll be pushing out in six months. Well, don't try putting in one on anybody in here, me old cock sparrow, or your own mother won't recognise you. Push her lee. Oh, yeah. Date of birth? 7th of the 2nd, 1940. Married or single? Single, Gov. Occupation? Street trader. Maguire, 148 pounds, Mr. Johnson. Right, Mr. Morgan. One on to you, Mr. Feeney. Right, Mr. Morgan. Religion? I'll see you, Gov. Right, turn out your pockets, give your valuables, Mr. Morgan. Right. And the next! Right there. <coughs> Bathhouse! What? One special! <laughs> Send him back like a newborn babe. <laughs> you dirty old dick. <laughs> my old woman would go through my hair with a small tooth comb tonight if she hadn't run away. Uh, orderly, put a spray around where his lordship was sitting, will you? Right, well, no money, Pusher Lee? No, Gov. Right, come round here and sign for your valuables, then. Well, I can't write properly. Well, do your best, boyo. Right. When you sign, Pusher Lee, get in there, throw out your clothes and pick up a blanket. Oh, give us a chance. Next. Right, right less of your lip and on your way. Come on. Oh, come on, Doc. You wake your ideas up. I'm going to be here all bloody night, right, you know. I'm coming, boss. I'm coming. Yeah, come on. Let's have your name. Jim Ritchie, boss. Jay Ritchie. Sentence? Fourteen years. I mean, Dolly, you going for big ones? Yes, sir. A fellow steals my wife, and I shot him right here. <laughs> but I was innocent, boss. Really, I never meant no harm. Come on, push him. Lucky they didn't put a rope round your neck. All right, I'll come off a jiffy. Previous conviction. Six. Six. Date of birth? I don't know, Chief. You know, it's a long time. Yeah. Well, I'll put you down at 35. Occupation? Film extra work. Oh, well, you'll be able to join the drama class when you get down to more. Lee, 168 pounds, Mr. Johnson. Right, Mr. Johnson. One on to you, Mr. Feeney. Right. Religion? I don't know, boss. You know, if no, you've got to have a religion. Take one. Oh, that's interesting. If you're taking a red one, you'll be an RC. White one, well, that's C of E. The blue one's for the Jews. Oh, Jew. So, from now on, you are a Jew. Who's looking after the shop, then? <laughs> hey, just a minute, Izzy. Married or single? Single. Here, look. You just said a fella stole your wife and you shot him. So how can you be single? Why, well, I'm single now. All on my own for 14 goddamn years. <laughs> All right, turn out your pockets and give your valuables to Mr. Morgan. Right. Money. Uh, five bob. All right, come and sign that. I can't write to you. Well, put a cross, then. When you sign, Doc, you get in there, throw out your clothes and pick up a blanket. Right, next one. Right, on your way, on your way. Here you are, me old Chop Johnson. Oh, one travelling coat. Mike Charlie. Right, I'm up from Dartmoor for me visit. 
Yeah, you've got to know that. I never recognized you sitting down there. Was it 12 years since you went down to Moor? Sure. How are you getting on? I'm up and down, Tom, sure, up and down. You know the trouble? It's hard to keep out of bother in the Moor. Jesus Christ himself couldn't do that. Hey, Mr. Morgan, you remember I told you the one and only time I was on condemned cell duty? Yeah. About the prisoner who was reprieved the night before he was due to be topped? Yes, I remember. Well, here he is. Yeah. Now you're done 12 years, eh? Yeah, I was reading in the papers the other day how you was the only life I left on a moor. That's right. One's gone back to the island, the other got a special after nine years. Have they fixed the date for your release yet? No, go for worse luck. Oh, never mind, lad. You could be worse off, you know. Right. Yeah, we had one fellow come into the condemned cell of the day. I think he'll have Ross, his name, do you know him? Yeah, I've been following his case. He done a five on a moor when I started my life. Well, lad, you must be tired. You had any dinner? Why not to you, Mr. Peeney? Since you've seen London, I've all these years. It broke me out traveling up here from Waterloo. Fish and chip shops, newspaper boys. We passed the pub, they were singing and dancing. Tell you, I was glad to get in here. Could do with a nice cup of tea, though. Cool. Uh, orderly, get him a pint of tea and put some sugar in it. I don't care where you get it from. As soon as said and done, Cup. Here, look, lad, you sit down. I bet you I'm the chief's officer about you. I'm Mr. Morgan. You're getting the details on that tramp. Aye. Right. Hello, tea service. Our reception here, sir. Yeah, all correct. I've got a man here, sir, Michael Carney. Yeah, he's a lifer up from Dartmoor, lodging here for accumulated visits. Yes, sir, he's wearing prison clothes, Dartmoor type special. Shall I pass him straight through, sir? Oh, yes, of course. Right, sir. Right. Yeah, well, the chief can't see until tomorrow. But you can keep those clothes on, dine in a mess, or sleep over the hospital. I'll give you a pass. Now then. Here's go. I've got an old leg now and another rope. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Morgan, we'll have those receptions back from the bathhouse, if you please. Yeah, How you been getting on then, go? Well, I've had a bit of bad luck, lad. The old woman ran away. No. Yeah. I've been together for 15 years. Right, right, I don't right. know why. I never well, thumped on her nothing. Still, she might come back. We'll see you lock first thing tomorrow morning. Any complaints? Oh, no complaints. Yeah, you, Rothschild. You come in here a dirty old tramp. Look at you now. Clean and handsome. So keep it that way while you're in here. Right, you'll get your clothes at the park worn stores. Okay, Connie. I'll take you. Lead on, single file. And stop your yapping! I've been out on the black since I was eight years old. The stories I've grabbed and the tales that I've told. I've broke up for boys and Danny, my baby, has broken my heart. Hold on, wait a minute. Shan't be a set. I'm just hanging up me washing. Shan't be a minute. Come on, Mom. I thought I told you boys not to come round here with stuff in the daylight. You'll have the coppers on our tail. Do you want us all to end up with Danny? Yes? Don't worry, man. No one saw us. Oh, this bloody smokeless fuel. You want to watch yourselves, you know, and you want to watch other people. Our world is full of informers. Half the people in the nick ain't there because they're catch by the police. They're there because of information received. That's what. And the biggest crime you can commit is to get caught. Leave off, Marvel. We know what it's all about by now. Yeah, and so did your father. And look what happened to him. He got topped at the bill for a hundred quid. And that was all through a grasp. An informer. The awesome. Yeah, and I've got something to say to you. What? When you're licking your girl's ear in bed, 
Don't go breathing no words down it. What? Many a good man has been topped for what he told a woman in B. What, me? I don't never get a chance, Ma. Can't even get a job. Don't none of us have much time for courting, Ma. Thieving's a full-time occupation. Here, yeah, anybody seen my paper? Where did you this little lot from? It was strapped out on the carrier of an old Rolls Royce that was parked outside of a booze in Bill Grave Mews. Oh, I hope it don't belong to the mush who runs the place. I used to sell leather outside there years ago. He often slipped me half a dollar. No, Mum, it's one of them Bell Grey burglars, you know, that wears jackets with splits up the back and all that, and, and, and cavalry twill trousers, you know. Well, let's see what you've got. It's a pity you ain't got no pussies, cos you know old Jim Lee? Oh, he's had a right tickle from some of his villainy. Mm. And he's gonna buy his old woman a mink coat for a hundred quid. Mm. He's taking her to the Grosvenor Hotel, the Showman's Guild, yeah. on New Year's Eve. Mark, we've earned ourselves a hundred quid. What about that then, eh? Hey. Oh, well, if you play your cards right, you'd have me tonight. Oh, dear. <laughs> hey, I think this must have belonged to some film star. Smells smashing. Don't be silly, boy. Brassies smell lovely and they wear mink. Still, you've done all right there. Bad, is it? This is the real, genuine article. I'm proud of you. I am really, boys. Let's see what else you've got. Ooh, kite book. That ain't much good to you three, is it? You can't write. Never got a chance, did we? Always out on the wag for you. Well, I can print, Mark. They taught me to print at Borstal. I bet if I'd done a bit longer, I'd have learned to write. Yeah. Do you think our Danny learned to write? Danny, oh my god, don't talk to me about Danny. What? First he gets himself six months for nothing, for chinning a copper, and then he pleads guilty. Yeah, that's true. Now listen, all of you. Never forget the eleventh commandment. Oh, yeah. Thou, Thou shalt, shalt not plead guilty. guilty. Not even if you're banged to write. Hey, who wants a married ankle? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're three jolly schoolsmen and Mar is our best. Whenever we're late, she invents our defense. The jury she strengthens, the bogey she buys. But Danny pleads guilty, brings tears to her eyes. Singing, do em up, trim em up, dump em up, boys. Oh, we'll do em up, trim em up, dump em up, boys. Now I am a burglar, as good as they come. And I am a creep who'll turn over a drum. I am a hoister so nimble and smart. But Danny, the state one, has broken my heart. Shut up, because... Hello, Abel. Hello, Doc. Aye, aye, here comes trouble. What do you want? Well, what's wrong? It's the same every time I come here. Look, I'll tell you what's wrong. I don't want no Irish cockney hanging round my den, you see. The next thing I know, you're having serving at the altar. Women are the cause of all the trouble. The boys blow down their ears when they're in bed with them. And then all the nicking they've done and all the villainy, it ain't a secret no more. Danny hasn't got any secrets from me. And anyway, he isn't a thief. No, oh, no, he ain't, is he? But he's in the nick just the same, isn't he? He's in the nick with thieves, murderers and blackmailers. Isn't it better to be in the nick for thieving something than to be in there fretting old people on top of the head, killing little boys and girls, raping and chinning Sorry. coppers? Violence is a mug's game. You never live to spend the money you make out of crimes of that kind. I wouldn't care if he was a good old tealy like his old dad. Or like my other boys here. They don't go round chinning coppers, do you, boys? I said you don't go round chinning coppers, do you? Oh, no, Ma, you can't spend the army that falls on the floor. Here, yeah, mind you, there's a few coppers I'd like to kill myself, aren't there? I mean, you take Obart, for instance. Oh, that's... He's a right animal. Yeah, Twist. I'll do for him myself. I mean, they truss you up just like a chicken, don't they? Yeah. And then along comes Ketch with about six feet of rope, and then they kick you down this trap, and then a geezer sort of jumps on your legs to make sure your neck's broke. Yeah, yeah straight. And if you're not dead after that little lot, there's a dirty great big screw down the bill that gives an extra jerk on your legs just for luck. Right. right. Well. Then the top of it all, Ketch goes along to some newspaper and gets thousands for telling how he angered. That's it. Oh, lay it off. You still haven't told me what you want. I want to know what prison Danny's in. I've got to see him. You stay away from him. It's a bit late in the day for that. I'm three months gone. What? Do you mean to tell me that my Danny's put you in the family way? You dirty or I'll leave off, Ma. She ain't done no harm. It's true. Danny told me he thought he'd put her in the pudding club. Well, then it's her fault then, isn't it? Oh, Look, it takes two to make a baby, doesn't it, Ma? She let him on. What did you want to pick on my Danny for? Well, I didn't want a baby, I can tell you. It just happened. 
Yeah. Go on, take those toys. Right. Outside, well, I'll go out in, in the yard, go on, I'll be. Yeah, I'm not sure you. You take that crap you're reading and get outside, too. Oh, but it's cold out there, Go on, get out when I tell you. I wouldn't listen. Go on. Now, listen, I'm going to ask you something, and I want you to speak the truth. Has anyone else ever touched you by my daddy? No, no, honestly, Britannia. I was a virgin till I went with Danny. Oh, my God, here we go. One of those, eh? <laughs> uh, well, my dear, lots of things can happen to you when you start having babies. You'll lose your figure. You'll get fat. You won't be able to go dancing no more. And some girls even go off their heads. Come over here, come on. Sit down here. Sit down. Now listen, why don't you be a nice, sensible little girl and come back here later on when the boys have gone out screwing and I'll get rid of that little lot for you. Oh, no. no. No, Britannia. I couldn't do a thing like that. It's worse than murder. And Danny's pleased. He'll be out before the baby's born and we can be married. Do you expect my Danny to keep you and a baby with what he gets by grafting with a barra? Well, I earn a few bob a week in the market. And I'm saving. Anyway, my old man's promised to give me a caravan. And 500 quid if the man I marry is a worker. Well, now, Danny is a worker. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'll admit that. He's a worker, all right. Why, well, remember when he was just a little kid, he used to sit up half the night making clothes pegs with his little knife. All right, cock, now listen. You pop along to Penderville and see if they let you in to see Danny. And if they do, you tell him I've got a screw straightened up and I'm sending him in some snout. Joe, Lou! Joss, get the van out and drive Rosa here out to the ville. Drive gently, mind. We don't want her to lose her baby. Nor her dad's cash, eh, girl? Sit there and I'll make you a nice cup of tea. Right, for the benefit of those of you who only come in last night, this is what you do when you're going to make your application. Stand on the mat, six feet in front of the governor's desk, give your name and number, make your application, right? Answer to your names and numbers. 659 Winters. Sir. 389 Crook. Sir. 427 Lee. Right. Right what? Right. When you address me, you call me sir, understand? Unless you want bread and water. Sir, 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 got it. Right. 618 Jenkins. Sir. Sir. What do you want? Can I fall out for a slash? No, you can't. This ain't a public convenience. But I'm bursting. Too bad. Four men all correct, sir. Eh? You missed a bit out there. It's got to have another coat, sir. Right, Chief. Close back in. Six, five, nine, winter, sir. Can I have a petition for the Home Secretary, sir? Right. Sir. Next applicant. One on to you, sir. Three, eight, nine, cook. Can I have a special letter to my wife, sir? No, I heard from the last one. No, you can't. Have an inquiry for him. Right. Which you don't understand, sir. I'm getting worried about her. I have no... Get out. Yes, sir. Next applicant. One on to you, sir. 427 Lee. Sir, can I have a special visit from my girl? What's so special about your girl? Well, she's in a family way and I'm worried about her. Well, if you're so concerned about her welfare, why didn't you marry her in the first place? Well, we were saving up to get married, then this happened. I got six months for nothing. You'll get a visit in 30 days or not before. Right, but, sir, her father might sling her out. So what? Well, she might commit suicide. Oh, I'm sick and tired of listening to all this twaddle. Out! But, sir, you've got to let me see her. I've got to, have I? I told you to get out. Out, Chief, oh. put this man on report for disobeying an order and take him down below. You bastard, I'll retire, Tom! Oh, hey, what you are! Next applicant. Get bastard! He's a gamer. Well, I don't know about game. He's mocked up my tobacco. Look at that. And when he comes up from Chokey, I'll give him a thump. I'm not about to thump at him. What about using him? 
He might fit into our little scheme. Well, I didn't mind it. I'll go to work on the screw when he comes. You try to get the mug for him out, Sal. Paint off that. That tough guy won't take him down as big as Which is what we were saying, sir, mucking up our tobacco. If you put him an out, when he comes up from Chilky, we'll kick his teeth in. You're going to have a new cellmate. Look at that. I ain't hanging around outside Nick's. Makes me feel superstitious like, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know what you mean. I always get the feeling if you go and visit someone, you end up walking around on remind yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I knew a fella once. Oh, oh no, you oh, knew a fella. Hang on, Barbara. Yeah, I knew a fella once who said tell out to his old woman. I'll be home just after five, he says. He was home after five, all right? Five years in a nick. Yeah, Here, do you know what happened? What? I'll tell you. He come here to visit one of his mates, see? And when he come out, the cop was nicked him, didn't they? One of the screws inside had been ear wigging and he got his collar felt. Charming. Isn't it all right? Mother thought they'd be straight. He is from a random present. Mother's got the keys of straight. She will never let a chance go by. I done the stretch in Pentonville, some mother bought a screw. She gave him ten a week and told him all he got to do. The Hilton couldn't never beat the service that he gave. He brought the papers every day and old spot for me shape. Oh, mother's got the geese of straightened, eating from her and or threatened. Mother's got the geese of straightened, she will never let a chance go by. Rosa. Did you see him then? No. Why not? He said he was down in the punishment cells and couldn't have no visits. Oh, blimey. Oh, Danny ain't up a mug, ain't he? No. First he gets himself nicked for nothing, then he can't even keep his nose clean while he's inside, can he? Yes. So Danny is convicted and they've taken him away to do his bit of birthing once for change. And the man that runs the prison is a man called Johnny May. And he's the hardest man in all the day. Two and a half furlongs to go, criminals are length in front. Oh, Jesus, you should think everyone there, Nick, is on that house today with a name like that. Oh, wait. It's Golden Salamba. That's better. Yeah, Golden Salamba's won it. Thank God for that. Good job, too. We stood to lose 40 ounces of snout if criminal had won. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, hope they're not going to stick a tramp in this pizza with us tonight. I wish they'd transfer one of them birds from Holloway. That'd do me. Get away, you can't make love on porridge. Hello, hello. Getting all studious like you blokes make me laugh. The yeah, eyes a new cellmate for you. He's been out in Chokey for a few days. You better have a talk with him, otherwise he'll lose a bit more emission. Up there, lad. Come. What's your name, son? Dan Lee. What's yours, mate? Mine? Johnny May. And this is Robbo. I'll go. Johnny May? The king of the underworld? That's what the papers say. Anyway, never mind about that, son. How long have you been down Chokey? Uh, three days number one, seven days number two. I lost three days remission. What for, lad? Oh, my bird Rosa, see, she's in the family way. And I heard that she'd come up here to visit me. Well, they told her I couldn't have a visit for 28 days and they wouldn't let her see me. But when I saw the governor, I'd done me nut and called him a dirty retired old puff. Yeah. He may be an old puff, but he's not retired. I remember him when he was housemaster of Postal. He's not on his own. I could tell you about a few tearaways who was puffs. Yeah. I caught a chip merchant banked the rights in his feeder one day. Anyway, son, why don't you write to your girl? Cheer her up. I'm not very good at reading or writing. Well, what do you do down the punishment cells then if you can't read? Nothing. Only thought of my Rosa all the time. I'm dead worried about her, what with her being in the family way and all. She ain't got no money, and I think her old man will kick her out. Yeah, hey, son. Have a smoke. Tough. You mentioned money just now. Have you ever had two grand? Two thousand quid? Me? <laughs> Twenty pound weight of chestnuts, about all I've ever had. What's the most money you've ever made, son? Um, Twelve quid. Grafting in the barrel on election day. Twelve quid, eh? It's a diabolical liberty, you know. It's not fair. Some have plenty and some have nothing. What are you in for, son? Salt on the copper. Mm. What'd you get? Six months. <sighs> Six months, eh? For nothing. You want to have material gain if you're going to come in here, son. Don't never come in for nothing. Yeah, that's it. Material gain, that's it. Material gain. You've got to make crime pay. But Johnny and me here, I mean, we've done a few laggings, but we've got thousands stashed away. <laughs> we've been to Cannes and Nice. Nice. We don't ever mess about, you know. We stay in all the best places. The Carlton, Martinez. Well, Johnny here's got a yacht tied up at the moment. Yeah. It's like a big cabin cruiser, yeah. All the crew on our pay. 
Word to win birth or something. Yeah, but I ain't no thief. I've never stolen nothing in my life. Well, it's about time you started, isn't it? I mean, it's not you in this game to do birth or nothing, you know, and the greatest crime is to get catch. It's funny you should say that. My ma always says that. Your ma? Why was your ma? What's your ma's name? They call her Pretty. Pretty Lee. Pretty Lee? I know Brittany Lee. Shit. Is that your ma? Yeah. She buys a bit of gear off all the oysters. Yeah, that's right. So you're no, Brittany Lee's no, boy, no. eh? Well, of course I can tell now. <laughs> cool. Here. Yeah. Now, fancy a boy of Brittany Lee doing half a stretch for nothing. Yeah. I bet she's choked. I'll bet she is double choked. She ain't too pleased. Do you realise that if you'd have been working with us, you'd have had a few thousand quid for doing six months? Wouldn't you do six months for two thousand quid? I don't know. Gee, who done? Tell us, what would you do if you had two thousand quid? Well, what would I do now? Well, I'd get rid of me barrow for a start. Then I think I'd buy myself a lorry in a caravan. Then in the summer, me and Rosa could graft all the fairs and the markets. Then in the winter, maybe we could get a stall down Portobello Market or go coaling. Six months should serve four. That's five hundred pound a month. That's hundred and twenty-five pound a week. That's more than some of them film stars yeah, get. Yeah, film stars' money. That's how I many you're not in prison. You're working like you got to look at it like a job of work for hundred and twenty-five nickel a week. Why, well, Johnny and I worked out our wages last night. And we've earned more a week this year than the Lord Chief Justice. Yeah. All right, Bob, well, just a minute. Let's get down the brass tacks. Now, look, Danny, I want to talk to you. Now, you know all about me. You know I'm a man of my word, right? Now, you've heard all about honour amongst thieves, haven't you? Sir? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all cobblers. There's no honour amongst thieves. There's a lot of dodgy characters in the underworld I ain't all that proud to be king of, I tell you. But no one can't say nothing against me, because I'm rich. Now, I'm a man of my word, and I like you. I like your face. It's a pity in one way you go out six months before us, because when we go out of here, there'll be a nice big car waiting yeah. to take us down to the airport, then from the airport to Nice, where we'll pick up my yacht. You could be with us for £2,000 as well in your pocket. Ah, that's it, that's it. Hey, we could make him second engineer. Sure. Me, second engineer? I don't know nothing about boats. The only boat I've ever been on was with Rosa. It was called the Jason Strip from Little Venice to Regent's Park, an old converted timber barge. <laughs> second engineer. You don't think we could make you a second engineer? Well, let me tell you a little story. Oh, Johnny and I had a right ticket once. We had 45 grand for our whack. What are you doing, son? Well, I want to... What's you the matter? You shy? <laughs> Any road, we decided to be, come on, let's go out to Tangier and do a bit of smuggling like. Now, Johnny bought a boat at Weymouth, then we had to find the crew. Are you listening to me? Yeah, go on. Now, now, the first engineer had 17 convictions for screwing, and the only boat he'd been on was the ferry from Southampton to Parkhead, yeah. Starlight White. <laughs> hey, and that's all over about the captain, eh, Johnny? Yeah. The captain. He'd learned the art of navigation out of a magazine called Yachting Monthly. <laughs> so I think we could make a second engineer out of you. Yeah, it is true on that occasion they slung us out of time, dear. Bloody cheek. Mind you, we're not going to do nothing crooked this time. Nah. This time we're going to take a nice, quiet cruise round the Mediterranean to relax like. Yeah. We'll have four or five nice little darlings on board. Yeah, it's a great life if you don't get catched. Would you like to be with us? Could have a nice little light eye girl with all the proper accoutrements. No, I think I'd rather be with Rosa on the Jason Street. But your Rosa could come with us, couldn't you, Johnny? Yeah, yeah, of course she could. Would you like that, Danny? Yeah. Don't you think it'd be worth serving another four months in prison for? With two grand in readies when you go out the same time as us? Let me ask you a straight question, son. Wouldn't you do four months in prison for the, to get some money? For the sake of your baby? She's having a baby, isn't she? Yeah. I suppose I would, but what's the use of talking? I'll never have 2,000 quid as long as I live. I wasn't ever meant to have that kind of money. That's where you're wrong, son. Anyone was meant to have that kind of money, if they want it bad enough. Now, you look like a man of taste to me. I bet your Rosa looked lovely in a nice mink coat. Yeah, great. Well, anyway, you said you would. I would what? Well, do four months in prison for 2,000 quid and a trip on my yacht. <laughs> yeah, but how do I do it? How do you do it? You see, son, the old secret of crime is straightening. Straightening. Before, while, and after action. The straightening iron's like. Look, lad, you see all the snouts in that there pouch? Well, that costs money. It's brought in by a bent screw. Straightened, you see. Yeah, all right. Look, you see, Danny, at a weekend, like all British institutions, crisis or no crisis, war or no war, this jail is only half staff. Now, the last thing they do every night is they come round two-handed to slop out. Now, Sunday night's only one screw comes round, and that'll be our screw, our bent screw. Now, when he asks you to slop out, what we want you to do, now listen carefully, is hit him on top of the head with the leg of that chair. Not too hard. Then me and Robbo here jump on your back and save the gallant prison officer's life. Now, for that, I'll give you 2,000 pounds. And the screw gets a monkey. Now, you'll get an extra six months for that. But you'll be out in four. It's only borrowed time. I mean, you get six on, we get six off. We lend it to you, and we pay you for it at 125 nickel a week. Yeah, but I'll get the cat for that. No, son, no, no. That's the beauty of it. The cat's been abolished. She never studied the law. No. She never read the Criminal Justice Act of 1948? No, of course, I forgot you don't read it. Now, look, to show good faith, I'll send your Rosa £500 on account. 
A monkey like. She'll get the balance when you've done it. And we'll take a chance on how much remission we get. I never forget the yacht, the sun and the little darling. Well, there it is, Daddy. What do you say? Yeah, for the sake of my Rosa, the sake of my baby, at least I'll be in here for something like. Of course you will, son. Of course you will, son. Right, Robbo, get a letter sent out in the morning. Have it sent to the spieler. Tell the boys to get a monkey to his Rosa, right? Uh, five days to Sunday. And tell him to give the screw to bearer, 250 pound on account. Right. Now, Danny, you look, when we jump on your back, call us a dirty pair of bastards and punch me in the eye, hard as you can. Yeah. And, uh, kick Robbo here in the cobbler. <laughs> and get in the habit of slopping out every night. Slop out! Hey, well, Johnny, we found out there was a right steam at a rail mug. But why did you tell him the cat was abolished? You can still get the cat for doing a screw. Ah, that mug won't know. He can't read. Knitter. Six hundred pound in the middle. Yeah. What's that, Joe? Eighty. Eighty pounds. Anybody want it? Eighty pounds. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll Anybody else? Right. Hang on. right. Come in. All covered. Yeah. Front, Joe. Four. Right. Little side bit. I'll lay two to one. There's no four. Anybody want it? I'll have two twenties of it. Two twenties of it. Anybody else? Yeah. Score there. Right. Yeah. Front, Joe. Five. In the out. Hi again, Joe. <laughs> Watch this drink. Six. Seven. Shut up. Four, I'm uh -huh. done it. Uh -huh. Give me a monkey out. Monkey out. Go for the balance. Go for the balance. Darling, have I brought you luck? Oh, do me yeah. a favour. Right. Leave off. Here, go and stuff yourself with salt beef. No strangers in the camp. Uh -huh. oh, no? Oh, right, we'll turn the speeding up for a moment. I've got something to say to you. I've got a stick here from the veal. The <coughs> Johnny May. Needs a bit of help. We must help one another, mustn't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, uh, there's a bench screw coming here tonight from the mill. I've got to give him two and a half hundred quid. And there's another monkey to be found for another party. See, something's gone wrong where Johnny's been away. And it wouldn't be safe for me to go near any of his money. So I'm asking you. I need a grant to start with tonight. So dive deep, chaps. Uh, yeah. Now, look, I started off with a one of myself. Yeah, I was a carpet there. Yeah. Oh, George, from the yard. Yeah, I'll just get 20 from me. Right, good luck. Leave that, that's out. Right. Darling. 15 quid light. Yeah, I'll just give me 12 quid. Oh, no, 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 no. Forget it. Well, I'm going to take such a diabolical liberty. Well, you want it come out yesterday? Look, kid, someone will turn up for me. No, look, mate, I don't want it. Put it back in your pocket. Wait till you've knocked all map in a web or something. Something's an arcade, eh, George? That's for you, mate. I'd turn it up if I was you. If your court's being once more, why'd I throw the book at you? Give over. It's all I know. What else could I do? A man has to do something to earn his living. Why don't you go ponting for a change? I wouldn't mind keeping him yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Turn it up, turn it up now. Now, let's get down to business. Now, you, Jenny, when that screw comes here, make great play for him. Take you back to your flat and give him a good time. And don't never charge him of it. You understand? Yeah, what's, uh, what's this screw's name? Spring Hill Jack, they call him. Spring Hill Jack? Well, he's a nice horse, oh, Talk about bent oh, screws, he's a bastard. Three days bread and water he got me a week before I release. If he comes down here, I'll have him. Now, listen, Nick, now. We've got a job to do for Johnny. None of us like dirty, crooked screws or dirty, crooked coppers, but they're essential. You know that, listen. He may be a bastard, his screws. Yeah, you wouldn't chuck up. Crooked screws and crooked coppers are always most efficient in their duties. That's to cover up their villainy. So keep your feelings to yourself when he comes down here. Give him a nice big smile. Or it might be that family. I'm a 457, May. It's better for you. 
One, three, two, Robertson. One for you. Four, two, seven, Lee. One for you. That's it. This Richard keeps writing to me and I don't want to know. Funny, isn't it? I wonder why these birds like villains like us. Hey, Johnny, what do you know about this? I've got an income tax demand. Where am I? I need three other week and these silly bastards want three grand off of me. It's a diabolical liberty. I've never paid stamps or tax of me like that. How can they tax a burglar, John? Well, if I was to pay taxes, the chance with the exchequer would be a receiver. I'd be compounded in a felony. They don't care how you get it or where you get it. They're worse villains than us. How are you getting on with your letter, Danny? <laughs> I can understand the first two words. It says, Dear Danny. Give us it over here. Let's read it to you. <laughs> Dear Danny, I'm ticking off the days as they go by. I still love you. I don't suppose you get much news in there. I don't know what to write about. My mum's in hospital. The old man gave her a right kick in. Abel got chucked at the old Bailey. Doris from next door has run off with a black man. <laughs> I hope I can visit you soon. I'm writing this during my dinner hour. I'm working in a flower shop. I'm sorry it's short. I've got to get back. Must close now. Lots and lots of love from Rosa. P.S. Since I started this letter, a man called Little George came in the shop and gave me some money he says he owes you. He says he'll pay the rest later on. He says for me to tell you. Good, they are. Now the chaps have done their part. They've bunged your Rosa a monkey, right? Why don't we do it tonight while our man's off? Yeah. Otherwise, we'll have to wait till next Sunday. One certainty is fixed in this life. Each son breaks the heart of his mother. Each husband will lie to his wife. And brother will strangle his brother. But life has its own compensation. Rascal that money can bring. For a yacht in the harbor at Capri. Very soon draws out that sting. A Mercedes is better than walking. Havana's are better than snout. And the birds on the beach at Alaska are calling you, Danny. Come on. Come on, Danny. My bird waits in Notting until the day I'm free The straightest girl in Nottingdale And she will wait for me For Rosa she Have a couple of days, make you feel good. Oh. What's the time, Robert? Hey, I'll have a deco. How can he tell the time looking out there? Well, dead on eight o'clock every night as a bird over there gets undressed. It's a screw's wife or daughter. She gives us a flash, but she don't know it. <laughs> Is she about? About? Oh, she's not half about. Dear me, hey, she hasn't half got some form. God. They get on my bristles. <laughs> well, never mind about that. We'll have enough time to think about that when we get out of here. Right, Arthur! Good, good, good. In a few minutes, the screw will be round slopping out. Robbo, we won't use a leg of the chair. I'll show for the cosh. Hey, Joe. Send down my line. Put old Bill on it. Hey, are, Danny. Old Bill. Danny, when you get out in the morning, don't forget to go and see my old woman. Okay, mate. He'll see his old woman all right. She's a right tartar. Oh, yeah, I wonder who's sleeping in my bed tonight. Listen to that, Muggy. His old woman couldn't sleep straight in her bed. Never mind, be straight to it. Cut the bunny, you'll be here in a minute. Go on, son, get your pot. Hey, don't forget, when he comes, punch me hard as you can in the movie and kick Robbo in the cobblers. <laughs> 
Any stops? Hey! Hey, Lord, please! Hey! Quick, up there, all these things! These things up here! Quick! Push him, Lord! Push him, Lord! He's done! I think he's done his stuff! Get him out! Throw him over that cross! Help him up, quick! Come and lie, get up off the floor, you're all right. Now listen, when they ask, you say Danny's been acting very strange and muttering and talking to himself. Oh, they won't leave us alone in here for too long in case we turn queer. God, he's ruined me for life. Bit of luck to be out of here in a few weeks. Oh, Michael Carney, sir. Lifer. Thanks. Michael Carney, life per Dartmoor, reprieved, is temporarily transferred to your establishment for compassionate reasons. Assist this prisoner in any way possible to further the relationship with his wife and himself. Well, Father, another of your flock. Yes, indeed. One time he was a hard case, but I'm told now yes. that he's calmed down a bit. Oh, Quite very good. Very Sir. Good. Look at Connie. Give your full name for the governor. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Michael Carney, lodger. So you're up from Dartmoor for your visits, and you've been here over a fortnight. Yes, sir. Who will be visiting you? In my pay, What? Well, you know, sir, 12 years is a long time for a woman to wait. It might be another three or four years before I get me released. So you've no fixed date of release? No, sir. That's the worst part about it. Year after year, not knowing if you're ever getting out. Just hoping, wishing. A fixed date of release would be... Well, it would be better, sir. No, I hope you have some luck. I understand you've been dining in the mess, and we're doing all we can for you. We'll uh, have to uh, do what we can. Of course, we haven't got the same sort of facilities here that you have at Dartmoor. I mean, playing musical instruments, football and so on. Anyhow, behave yourself. Right, Connie. Give me extension of visit if my wife comes, sir. I haven't seen her for 12 years. To raise that, Chief. I'll do that, sir. Right. I'll run along, girl, if I may. I'd like a few words with Connie and his servant. Right, Charles, Father. Send in the first applicant, Chief. Right, sir. First applicant. Give your full name and number to the governor. Five double eight, Anthony Hobbs, sir. Yes, Hobbs? Well, sir, Moss and White in D1 mess have been trafficking, sir. An officer Hill will be bringing in a parcel of tobacco for them in the morning, sir. I must warn you that if this accusation against Officer Hill proves to be false, you'll be liable for punishment. Do you still persist in it? Yes, sir. Right, Hobbs. Outside, Hobbs. Chief. Have Moss and White search before they go into the mess. Have Officer Hill search when he comes on duty. Right, sir. Right. Next, Africa. Give your full name and number to the governor. Number 163, Samuel David Goldstein, sir. Yes, Goldstein. Sir, I want protection from the Oxton gang, sir. But for? They're going to use a razor on me, sir. But for? You see, uh, they think I cheated them out of 2,000 pounds worth of furs and then gave them away to the police before they was paid, sir. But I didn't. I didn't do it, sir. Right, Goldstein. Chief, see you this. Yes, sir. All right, Goldstein. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That man's a rat, sir. We must protect even rats in this service, of them. Yes, sir. I got me and Robertson outside, sir. The officer who was attacked last night says these two men saved his life. Oh, yes. Well, how is this officer now, Chief? I'm afraid he's in a pretty bad way, sir. He's only just regained consciousness. I think we ought to tighten this place up, sir. Yes, Chief, I agree with you. Have the prison search for weapons and uh, enforce the silence rule. I'll do that, sir. Yes. Uh, May and Robertson, sir, may I suggest that you uh, grant them an extra remission of sentence? Well, let's have a look at their records first. Chief. Right, sir. John May, sir. May, industrious for Borstal, revoked license Borstal, three convictions for robbery with violence, two for malicious wounding, 23 convictions in all. Yes, now Robertson. Sir. Same, same pattern. Well, let's have it in, Chief. Yes, sir. May, Robertson. Give your full name and number to the Governor. 457 Mace. 132, Robertson, sir. Officer Jackson, who was savagely attacked last night, stated that you two men were responsible for saving his life. I see you've both been well behaved during this sentence, and you've only a few months to do. I'm going to recommend to the prison commissioners that you're both given special remission of sentence, as I want to thank you both. We shall be taking a full statement from you both later on, 
and you may have to give evidence before the visiting magistrates. Are you uh, prepared to do this, May? Yes, sir. Robinson? I suppose so, sir. Right, now go back to your work until I send for you. Where is it, Chief? Mayor Robertson, you both saw Lee attack Officer Jackson. Is that right? Yes, sir. Make an unprovoked attack upon him with this weapon. Is yes. that right? Well, I thanked you both just now for saving Officer Jackson's life. I'm sorry to have to say now that you witnessed a murder. Prison Officer Jackson is dead. Now Danny is in hospital in Brixton waiting for with silence and the gangster on his right. On his left the madman who has sworn to clear the holy marsh of prostitutes who hustle there at night. Yeah, silent shame's got one. That lousy bastard wouldn't give you the time. Thinks because he shot a fella in a club and his mob's got plenty of money, he's got a superiority complex. Thinks I'm a mug because I strangled a whore. But if she gave him what she gave me, he'd have strangled it as well. So I think I cost me two quid for a dose of the pox. Sorry, you know, he'd strangle a few more like Jack the Ripper. Silent Sam! You're going to swing! Right on the end of a bloody great piece of string! Oh, yeah, uh, knuckles, knuckles! The oh, whole world's a lot of knuckles! And you'll all finish up in the knuckle yard! I killed a whore in Kensal Town, hullabaloo She picked me up and I struck her down, hullabaloo Hullabaloo bala for overcharging me half a crown, hullabaloo I killed a whore in Notting Hill, hullabaloo belay. I buried her deep and she's lying there still, hullabaloo belay. Hullabaloo belay. She overrated her little skill, hullabaloo belay. I've killed three whores and I'll kill one more, hullabaloo belay. I've killed three whores and I'll make it four, hullabaloo belay. Because I'm declaring a holy war, hullabaloo, I hope they don't hang him. This is a matter of the march here. You ought to be in Broadmoor, really. Yeah, and the sooner the better. Couldn't sleep last night with his raving. Yeah, that's right. Well, he's still on to you, sir. Right, put him in number two there. That's right, son. Take off the tie, son. Give it to you. Give us your shoelaces. Shoelaces? What's it all about? Me shoes are flop about. Give us your laces. Just so you can't harm yourself. There you are, then, son. Go to Kip when you like. When can I see me go on this? I've got an headache. Well, I'll get you something for it. Sorry, where's my tea? Coming, they'll be. Just getting some aspirins for your new soul, mate. New soul, mate, eh? Hey, you! What's your name? Lee. Danny Lee. You're the one that killed the screw. Uh, I didn't ever mean to. Have you got any stout? Yeah, hang on. I'll sling some across. Hey. Charlie, where's my bloody tea? All right, Nobby. We'll go and get it now. Come on, Lee. Let's go to it. Now that he's gone, hey, tell me, why did you kill the screw? I don't know. I suppose I must have hit him too hard. Yeah, I must be crazy. But if you're not crazy, do you know what they'll do to you? They'll put you in a condemned cell for three clear Sundays. That's the law. Then they'll thrush you up like a chicken. The hangman hits you over the head with a sack full of crap and throws you down, down the hall. And a dirty big screw swings onto your feet and gives your neck an extra jerk. 
a little chew on my pox. There ain't no peace on this earth. I'd be better off to be dead. I think I'll strangle the hangman. No, I won't. I'll do it, Charlie. Charlie, where's my bloody tea? Hurry up, Charlie, because when I've had my tea, I'm going to kill you. All right, son. Doctor, what's Come on, see Charlie. You. Come and meet my miracle. I'll keep your tea hot for you. Now, well, give us your mug, Nobby. I'm coming on, sir. I'm gonna kill him, Charlie! Because there ain't no peace on the church! Come on, the devil! All right, take it easy, take it easy. Steady. There you are. Here, just coming up first thing after lunch, number one call. Yeah, my scheming. Oh, a proper mug is our Denny. First he gets himself off a stretch for nothing. Now he's up on a murder charge. My own flesh and blood. Yeah. Here, here, see that little bloke? Just got that one with glasses on. Gone around the corner. Well, he's awaiting jury. And he's on our Danny's jury. I've been on his tail. Well, boys, I've got to do something. He's one of our own, you know. Sink or swim. Even if I get my collar felt, I've got to help my Danny. Hello. Listen, Mar, we don't want you in the nick and all. Here, Mar, let me have a go at the keys. I'll straighten that up. No, no. You leave this to me. I'll do it my own way. You'll only mess it up. You smug me up. Come on, I've got to get rid of this stuff. Here, put those pussies away. You take my drawings, Jobs. the body of Emma Golightly, who passed away in 1865, aged 23. Cool, she must have been rich to have a lovely gravestone like that. Eh, sir? I wonder. She might have been a beautiful actress, might just been the daughter of a cabinet maker. Death's a funny thing, ain't it, sir? It ain't no respecter of class. Of course, it do depend how you die. Now, my Bert, my old man, he's dying of cancer. And he's worked so hard all his life. Yeah, I'm sorry. Would you mind if I sat down beside you, sir? It's me knees, you see. I've got arthritis. I'm a cleaner, you see, sir, around the corner at St. Bart's Hospital. And, of course, I'm kneeling all day, and that don't help. This is me lunch hour. Have an apple? No, thank you. It's me tea. They're new, and they ain't settled in yet. Well... As I was saying, we never think of death, do we, sir? Not till it strikes our own. Now, my Bert, he's worked so hard as a cabinet maker all his life. Cabinet maker, eh? I'm a cabinet maker. Look, well, fancy that. Ain't it a small world? Have you got any children, sir? No. Wish I had. Not even married. Forty-five and still a bachelor. No one loves me. Oh, don't be silly. Your mother loves you. Oh, yes, yeah, she... Oh, there's nothing like a mother's love, and she's always there to look after you. Yeah, I suppose you're right. She gets me sandwiches, makes sure I have two apples, gets me up for work at six, sees me I go out every day. She thinks I've gone to work today. She doesn't know I've got to go across there on a jury at two o'clock. She's 78. I don't upset her. She's against these hangings, and I think she's right. Oh, I'm sure she is, sir. I'm sure she is. But if you ain't sure, there's only one thing you can do. What's that? You must talk the jury into finding your man not guilty. Barbara's got the key to straighten. Eat it from her ankle You see that figure up there? Holding what they call the scales of justice. What? They're the actual scales of justice. And you know what she'd say if she could speak? She'd ask for the inspector of weights and measures. Them weights are very dodgy, sir. Mother got the key to straighten. She will never let a chance go by. Are you Daniel Lee? Yes, Cap. Daniel Lee, you are charged with capital murder. The particulars being that you, on the 13th day of 1965 in the county of London, murdered Arthur Jackson. He being a prison officer acting in the course of his duty. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Well, I'm guilty in a way. 
Good but that you see, it's jealousy. not as simple as that. I didn't mean to kill him. Are you then pleading not guilty? No, I done it. But it wasn't murder. You see, there, there was these two fellas. And Are I you admitting that you struck Mr. Jackson? Yes, Gov. And when you struck Mr. Jackson, what did you mean to do to him? I wanted to do him up a bit. By that, I presume that you mean that you intended to injure him. Down that where the killer has inflicted grievous bodily harm at his victim by a voluntary act which causes the death of the victim and which was intended to cause grievous bodily harm, and there exists implied malice which constitutes malice of forethought and which accordingly renders a killing murder. My lord, yes. Yeah. He's told me repeatedly that he has no desire to deceive the court by telling lies and that accordingly he wishes to plead guilty. I have explained to him the full implications of such a plea. Only one sentence in this case, that you suffer death in the manner authorized by law. So be it. Oh, three clear sons is Danny now is in the condensed cell, waiting for the morning he must die. Keep healthy hours passing by the tolling of the bell, and before him sees the grave where he will lie. I'm very happy to see you again, Dad. Would you mind? Yes, Father. Thank you very much. Well, Danny, how are you? Well, Father, I don't really know. I wanted to see you because I'm so worried about Rosa. Yes. She's having the baby soon. Well, my old mum don't like her much and the screws in here are a lot of mugs. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to help. Well, is she a Catholic? Yes, Father. Well, where are you going to marry her in the Catholic Church? Well, Father, we hadn't really thought about anything like that. Mm -hmm. You see, <clears throat> none of us had much schooling and my old mum didn't think much of it and I never thought much about it myself until now. Yes. Well, most people, Danny, turn to God du during suffering. Now, w have you received the sacrament recently? <laughs> it's ten years, Father. I I've not been to confession or communion mm -hmm. since I was a little kid. Well, would you like me to come and say a mass in here tomorrow morning? Would you like to make a good confession for me now? Oh, well, I'd like to, Father, but I can't remember what to say. I've forgotten the words. I've never been confirmed like. Yes. I've committed a lot of sins. Yes. Oh, it'd take too long. Don't worry about that now. That's nothing. I'll help you. Come now and confess to me. All right, Father. I think I can remember the first bit. Good. Uh, yes. Bless me, Father. Yes. Right. For I have sinned. Yes, that's it, yes. I... Yes. I... Uh, yes. Uh, sit, 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 sit up, um, Danny. Sit, 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 sit up. Now, take your time. There's no hurry. Is that all right, Father? Yes, of course it is. Now, tell me everything you can remember doing wrong. Well, I've always been getting into fights all my yes. life. I've been in fights since I was 14. Yes. I've given Abel a black eye, yes. and I've been with my Rosa and wasn't ever married. Yes. I've told a lot of lies. Yes. Oh, I'm a terrible villain, really, Father. God will never forgive me. I'll finish up in hell, won't I? No, no, you won't, Danny. Unless you die with mortal sin on your soul. Now, tell me all about this murder you are charged with. Don't be afraid. You see, you've left it out. No, Father, I haven't left nothing out. Oh. I know you won't believe me, but I never meant that screw no harm. Yes. He was in it anyway. Yes. It, it was supposed to be a sort of pantomime, like, you yes. see? Yeah, I see, I see. Uh, but, Danny, you know that whatever you say to me in confession will remain a secret. I shall never tell anyone. I shall forget it myself. You know that. You believe in me, Danny, don't you? And you believe in God? Yes, Father, but I never meant You still kill. say you didn't mean him any harm. Yes, Father, that's the truth. Good. Very well, then. Now, is there anything else now you'd like to tell me? No, Father, nothing. Yes? Only I don't want to die. I hate the bastards that put me in here. It ain't right that a man should have to die from something he's done accidental. Believe me, Danny, I understand how you feel. But don't feel too bitter about it, as it can only harm. Remember, Danny, that our blessed Lord himself was condemned to death after a trial that was a mockery of justice and under laws that were unjust. He, too, suffered all that you are suffering now. Now make a good act of contrition. And for your penance, eh, 
five our fathers and five here Mary's. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I am heartily sorry. I'm heartily sorry. For all my all sins. My sin. Because they deserve <laughs> thy dreadful punishment. <laughs> because they have crucified my loving Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, but most of all most because they offend thy infinite, infinite goodness. goodness. And I firmly resolve <laughs> with the hope of thy grace to offend thee no more, <laughs> and carefully to avoid the, the occasions, occasions of, of sin. sin. Good. Yeah. Now, miseriata tuus omnipotens deus et omnipotens peccatus tuus, perduca te vita mitana, my man. In nomine Patri et Filia Spiritus Sancti. God bless you, Danny. Well, now, Danny, I hope you feel better. Have you, have you got your rosary? Hey? Have, you, have you got your rosary, your rosary beads? Uh, no, Father, I lost them when I was a kid. Oh, well, then, you better take mine. There you are. Oh. Thank you, Father. I shall ask the bishop to come and confirm it. And tomorrow morning I shall be here myself at seven to say mass. So, Danny, keep your heart up. And goodbye till then. Goodbye, Father. All right, Danny boy. There's a letter for you. It's just come. Oh. I can't read, Gov. Can you read it for me? Hmm. It's a summons to appear in court on the 18th of March for obstruction with a barrow. Oh, that's tomorrow. It must be a good omen. Uh, well, would you write a nice letter to that magistrate for me, Gov? Now, let me see. Uh, sir, I'm sorry I cannot appear tomorrow. I would very much like to come, only I... I have an appointment with Mr. Ketch on Thursday and he might keep me hanging about. <laughs> if he don't, I'll pop down to see you, mate. Why, why not send my papers to Miss, Mr. Ketch? <laughs> he loves me in at the kill. <laughs> From Natalie <Lee. laughs> Now listen, dearie. When Danny comes in, don't start crying. You only upset him. You tell him that we're going out tonight to get signatures for his reprieve. Tell him all the papers say he'll be reprieved. I want to go in there and kiss my Danny. He's my baby, you Sorry, know. Ma. Against he's, the rules. He's always been a good son to his mum and given me money. Sorry, Ma. Here, don't you tell me I can't go in and kiss him. I'll oh, have you reported. Up, I write to the Queen about you. Stinkers. Hello, sweetheart. Now, you look lovely, eh? Any news yet? Everybody thinks you'll get reprieved. We're going round the pubs tonight to try and get some more signatures. Everybody thinks I'll get reprieved. Everybody said <coughs> I had a marvellous chance. But look where I am now. My QC went bent on me. I don't think he was even trying. They tell me he went to school with a prosecutor. You've been eating all right, son. You look a bit thin to me. I was only saying to your Aunt Lil yesterday, I said, I do hope they give my Danny plenty of bread pudding and faggots, because he do like his bread pudding and faggots. No, Mum, I've lost my appetite. I don't fancy nothing anyway. But don't worry. Uh, how's Lou, Joss and Abel? Oh, they're lovely, they are. They've taken your Aunt Lil to the hospital. She's going to be scraped again. Though what a woman of her age wants to keep having babies for, I'll never know. It's a terrible operation, you know. Ooh, I remember when I was scraped. It was just before you was born. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was just before your dad got his seven. Time he won out on a pill. If he hadn't one time out on a pill, you might never have been born. I sometimes wish I hadn't. Oh, don't say that, son. You ain't missing much in here, you know. It's a miserable bastard life outside. What with my back, Aunt Lil's operation, and the atom bombs in Scotland, and now there's a load of flu about. I think I've got to dose myself. Where's my snuff box? The baby will be born soon, Danny, remember? What'll I call it? Uh, if it's a girl, we call her Penny. I want it to be a boy so I can call him Danny. Oh, ain't that nice? I know it'll be a boy. 
Did you get the money all right? Oh, I've got that all right. I'm looking after that for Rosa. You couldn't trust your old man. But, Mara, I want Rosa and the baby to have it. You'll be all right. You've got the boys to look after you. You won't ever want for nothing. I want my Rosa and my baby to have the best. Oh, don't talk like that, son. I wouldn't touch a penny of it. You know that. I mean, to say your Rosa, she ain't so marvellous with money, you know. She ain't fly like your old mum. She could have made a packet out of this. Well, I got 50 quid from them Sunday newspaper reporters. Oh, we had a lovely drink, we did. And I gave them all them photographs of you when you was a little boy. Mind you, they drank all my whiskey, but they did give me 50 quid. And as one of them said to your Aunt Lil, well, Mrs, they said, you can do with all the money you can get, because you won't get no insurance money. Later. Insurance money, you bloody wicked old cow, insurance money. That's all you've ever thought of all your life, isn't it, Ma? Money, money, money. When I was a little kid, you tried to send me out fever and when I wouldn't go, you made me sit up all night making clothes pegs with me pen knife. Money, money, money. I'll take it away. I want to behave. I want to die. He's gone mad. Stark, staring, raving bonkers. Did you hear what he called me? His own mother? The best mum a boy ever had? My God, let me get out of here. Oh, Daddy. Rosa must wait in Nottingdale for all eternity before I come to Nottingdale. Can Not a jerk. Not a jerk. Oh, lovely, Charlie. Let's have old Willie up and try again, eh? Yeah. I'll close the trap. Hey, give us an hour with, with old Willie, then, fellas. So. That's it. So. Got you. Come on, Charlie, hurry up. Now, the hanging bell for them. That's it. Uh, now, look. In future, allow you to tie that knot a little bit tighter on the left of the jaw. Because yeah. the dislocation of the vertebrae without decapitation depends on the tightening of that knot on the left lower jaw. Yeah, gotcha. How all do right. you feel, Charlie? Well, I'm all right, thanks, Albert, but uh, I'd rather be down old uh, Brand's ash on my motorbike, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, come on, when you take over from me, which God willing won't be very long now, I want you to be the finest angler in the world, as befits my future son-in-law. From the cell to the trap shouldn't take more than 12 seconds. Yeah. And don't forget that left lower jaw. Right. If you give him one inch more of the rope, I'll pull his bloody head off. Gotcha. We don't have any Nuremberg's here, do we? Aye. Well, of course, Charlie, you wouldn't remember that, would you? You were only a lad at the time. No, well, what happened to Nuremberg then, no, Albert? Well, there is 26 top German brass to be topped. They gave the job to some yank who didn't know the secret of the left lower jaw. Oh, I see, yeah. Bloody amateurs. Didn't you see the photographs in the Time magazine, Joe? No, Albert, what happened? Oh, enough to make you weak, believe me. Should they give the job to an Englishman? Best angler in the world. I want you to do the rest of the lot when I retire. And, uh, oh, what? Make into a secret. I'm getting nearly £30,000 for my story from this Sunday. Uh, cool, how about that then? Oh, good evening, Doctor, sir. Oh, good evening, Albert. Glad to introduce my future son-in-law, Charlie Smith. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, sir? Well, how's the old ticker, Albert? Oh, not too bad, not too bad, sir. Uh, touch wood. <laughs> and the wife, uh, still getting that arthritis, isn't it? Oh, no, no, she's lovely, thank you. Charlie is a bit nervous. Tomorrow morning's the first time he's helping me. <laughs> There's no reprieve, I suppose. No, the uh, Home Office issued their final statement this afternoon. With no possible grounds, anyway. Oh, good. We don't want to come all this way for nothing, do we? <laughs> this man we're hanging in the morning. I've got his particulars here. Weight of heaven's stone, six pounds. Is that right? That's right, Alan. Yeah, any peculiarities or deformities? Any false teeth? No, it's a dead simple job for you. Will he be any trouble? Well, could be. He's a rough type, you know. I'm going to give him a sedative tonight. Mm -hmm. He appears to be all up and down since his last visit. Fell happy with his old mother. Uh, anyway, Albert, uh, I must away. Uh, see you in the morning. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning, all right. Yeah, he's a nice enough fellow, our doctor, you know, but uh, he's nearly always half drunk on execution. You're joking. Well, he once told me he couldn't come to the execution yet unless he had three large scotches for breakfast. I don't believe it. It's a funny thing, that, isn't it? Squeamish. 
I don't need that, Charlie, neither will you. Come down here to do a job like any other. Look, we sleep in that cell opposite. The beds are a bit hard, but they make us quite comfortable. I brought a book of peace for us. There's a Mickey spill aim for you. Oh, so I read this and, one. And uh, grandfather's Bible for me. Great thing to have tradition in the family. He had the job of hanging for 25 years, and his father before him. Oh, he's a great old gentleman. You don't meet his sort nowadays, you know. No, Albert. No, you don't. I remember when I was a nipper, riding along the country lanes at the back of his pony cart, listening to him and my father talking of ways of bringing a man to an easy death. It's a great profession, this Albert, though a lot of people won't admit it. We perform a real public service. I know. A lot of the lads would like to be where I am now, you know. Oh, I reckon you're right there. They say they get five or six applications every week for our job at the Home Office. But you must keep up the standards. No good getting slack in a profession like ours. I always like to think of the words of my great-great-grandfather, who said that he regarded himself as a man who plucked the weeds out of God's garden. He put that beautiful light, didn't he, Albert? He did, Charlie. Don't you never let down his memory? Not me, mate. Shall we turn in? Yeah, sure. Hey, Albert, you know, I was thinking, we should have another go with old Willie here. I mean, I don't want to make any mistakes in the morning, now do I? Hey, can I have a go on the lever this time? Love it, Charlie. Not a jerk. You're doing this to the manor born. Now, you should remember that left lower jaw and you'll make out fine. I tell you, Lou, if they've got enough to nick you, they've got enough to charge you. And if they've got enough to charge you, they've got enough to convict you. And if they convict you, don't you think they won't hang you? Because they bloody will will the bastards. The old bleeding system's bent. Take it easy, Martin. Look after me. Yeah. Well, oh. Mark, calm down now. Calm I don't down. know why we even bothered to try and save him. I always knew they'd get him in the end. And why? Because he forgot the 11th commandment. Thou shalt not plead guilty. Yeah, yeah. Don't you forget that, boys, because Danny did. Leave off my pack and have some respect. Be. Have some respect. Look at him. He ain't got no feelings. Well, my Danny was the best son in the old wide world. And his very last words to me was that he'd got the best mum in all the world. All right. Mother of God, where were you that day? The villains tempted my daddy. That hour he was lost, he was dead from that day. And you turned your back on my daddy. Mother of God, where are you? They're coming to hang my daddy. The quick lines prepared, no flower will grow on the grave where they buried my daddy. to wait outside, Father. Would you please?
Ja. He is hurt me, Father. Danny, come here. Danny, I want you to be very brave this morning. I want you to die like a good Catholic. I shan't leave you. I shall be with you all the time. Oh. Oh. Look after my Rosa, Father, and tell her that I love her. Yes, of course I am. My God, I love thee. Thou seest me, thou knowest all, thou canst do all. <laughs> now, Danny, a prayer to Our Lady to assist you. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn thy most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Now, Danny, stand up. Hey, our Danny boy. for all eternity before I come to nothing care
Not a jerk. Not a jerk. Oh, lovely, Charlie. Let's have old Willie up and try again, eh? Yeah. I'll close the trap. Are you going to out with, with old Willie, then, fellas? So. That's it. So. Got you. Come on, Charlie, hurry up. Now, the hand you hanging bill for them. That's it. Ah, uh, great. Now, look. In future, I'd like to tie that knot a little bit tighter on the left of the jaw. Because yeah. the dislocation of the vertebrae without decapitation depends on the tightening of that knot on the left lower jaw. Yeah, gotcha. How all do you right. feel, Charlie? Well, I'm all right, thanks, Albert, but uh, I'd rather be down old uh, Brand's ash on my motorbike, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, come on, when you take over from me, which God willing won't be very long now, I want you to be the finest angler in the world, as befits my future son-in-law. From the cell to the trap shouldn't take more than 12 seconds. Yeah. And don't forget that left lower jaw. Right. If you give him one inch more of the rope, I'll pull his bloody head off. Gotcha. We don't have any Nuremberg's here, do we? Eh? Well, of course, Charlie, you wouldn't remember that, would you? You're only a lad at the time. No, well, what happened to Nuremberg then, uh, Albert? Well, there was 26 top German brass to be topped. They gave the job to some yank who didn't know the secret of the left lower jaw. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, bloody amateurs. Didn't you see the photographs in the Time magazine, Charlie? Oh, wow. what happened? Oh, enough to make you weak, believe me. Should have given the job to an Englishman. Best angler in the world. I want you to do the rest of the lot when I retire. And, uh, oh, what? Let you to a secret. I'm getting nearly thirty thousand pounds for my story from this Sunday. Uh, oh, how about yeah. that then? Oh, good evening, Doctor Sir. Oh, good evening, Albert. Glad to introduce my future son-in-law, Charlie Smith. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, sir? Oh, how's the old ticker, Albert? Oh, not too bad, not too bad, sir. Uh, touch wood. <laughs> and the wife uh, still getting that arthritis in her back? Oh no, no, she's lovely, thank you. Charlie is a bit nervous. Tomorrow morning's the first time he's helping me. <laughs> There's no reprieve, I suppose. No, the uh, Home Office issued their final statement this afternoon. With no possible grounds, anyway. Oh, good. We don't want to go all this way for nothing, do we? <laughs> this man we're hanging in the morning. I've got his particulars here. Weight, 11 stone, 6 pounds. Is that right? That's right, Alan. Too long. Don't worry about that, now. That's nothing. I'll help you. Come now and confess to me. All right, Father. I think I can remember the first bit. Good. Uh, yes? Bless me, Father. Yes. Right. Oh, I have sinned. Yes. Sit. Yes. I. Yes. I. Uh, yes. Uh, sit, 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 sit up, Danny. Sit, 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 sit up. Now, take your time. There's no hurry. Is that all right, Father? Yes, of course it is. Now, tell me everything you can remember doing wrong. Oh, I've always been getting into fights all my yes. life. I've been in fights since I was 14. Yes. I've given Abel a black eye. Mm. And I've been with my Rosa and wasn't ever married. Yeah. I've told a lot of lies. Yeah. Oh, I'm a terrible villain, really, Father. God will never forgive me. I'll finish up in hell, won't I? No, no, you won't, Danny. Unless you die with mortal sin on your soul. Now, tell me all about this murder you're charged with. Don't be afraid. You see, you've left it out. No, Father, I haven't left nothing out. I know you won't believe me. But I never meant that screw no harm. Yes. He was in it anyway. Yes. It, it was supposed to be a sort of pantomime like, do you yes. see? Yeah, I see, I see. Uh, but Danny, you know that whatever you say to me in confession will remain a secret. I shall never tell anyone. I shall forget it myself. You know that. You believe in me, Danny, don't you? And you believe in God? Yes, Father, but I never meant... You still to... say you didn't mean him any harm. Yes, Father, that's the truth. Good. Very well, then. Now, is there anything else now you'd like to tell me? No, Father. Nothing. Yes? Only I don't want to die. I hate the bastards that put me in here. It ain't right that a man should have to die from something he's done accidental. Believe me, Danny, I understand how you feel. But don't feel too bitter about it, as it can only harm. Remember, Danny, that our blessed Lord himself was condemned to death after a trial that was a mockery of justice and under laws that were unjust. He, too, suffered all that you are suffering now. Now make a good act of contrition. And for your penance, uh, five Our Fathers and five Hail Marys. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I am heartily sorry I'm heartily for all my, all my sins. Because they deserve <laughs> thy dreadful punishment. <laughs> Because they have crucified my loving Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. But most of all, most because they offend thy infinite, infinite goodness. goodness. And I firmly resolve, <laughs> with the hope of thy grace, to offend thee no more. <laughs> and carefully to avoid the occasions of sin. Good. Yeah. Now, miseriata tuas omnipotence. Simple as that. I didn't mean to kill him. Are you then pleading not guilty? No, I've done it. 
But it wasn't murder. You see, there, there was these two fellas. And Are I... you admitting that you struck Mr. Jackson? Yes, Gov. And when you struck Mr. Jackson, what did you mean to do to him? I wanted to do him up a bit. By that, I presume that you mean that you intended to injure him. Lay down that where the killer has inflicted grievous bodily harm at his victim by a voluntary act which causes the death of the victim and which was intended to cause grievous bodily harm, and there exists implied malice which constitutes malice of forethought and which accordingly renders a killing murder. My lord, yes. He's told me repeatedly that he has no desire to deceive the court by telling lies and that accordingly he wishes to plead guilty. I had explained to him the full implications in such a plea. Only one sentence in this case, that you suffer death in the manner authorized by law. So be it. Oh, three clear sons is Danny now is in the condensed cell, waiting for the morning he must die. Keep healthy hours passing by the tolling of the bell, and before him sees the grave where he will lie. I'm very happy to see you again, Dan. Would you mind? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Well, Danny, how are you? Well, Father, I don't really know. I wanted to see you because I'm so worried about Rosa. Yes. She's having the baby soon. Well, my old mum don't like her much, and the screws in here are a lot of mugs. Yes. I wanted you to help. Well, is she a Catholic? Yes, Father. Well, were you going to marry her in the Catholic Church? Well, Father, we hadn't really thought about anything like that. Mm. You see, none of us had much schooling, and my old mum didn't think much of it, and I never thought much about it myself until now. Yes. Well, most people, Danny, turn to God du during suffering. Now, w have you received the sacrament recently? <laughs> it's ten years, Father. I I've not been to confession or communion mm -hmm. since I was a little kid. Well, would you like me to come and say Mass in here tomorrow morning? Would you like to make a good confession for me now? Oh, I'd like to, Father, but I can't remember what to say. I've forgotten the words. I've never been confirmed like. Yes. I've committed a lot of sins. Yes. Oh, it'd take too long. Don't worry about that now. That's nothing. I'll help you. Come now and confess to me. All right, Father. I think I can remember the first bit. Good. Uh, yes. Bless me, Father. Yes. Right. For I have sinned. Yes. Sit. Yes. I. Yes. I. Uh, yes. Uh, sit. 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 Sit down, Danny. Sit. 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 Next question. Why don't you use that? 427 Lee. Sir, can I have a special visit from my girl? What's so special about your girl? Well, she's in a family way and I'm worried about her. Well, if you're so concerned about her welfare, why didn't you marry her in the first place? Well, we were saving up to get married, then this happened. I got six months for nothing. You'll get a visit in 30 days and not before. Right, but sir. Her father might sling her out. So what? Well, she might commit suicide. Oh, I'm sick and tired of listening to all this twaddle. Out! But, sir, you've got to let me see her. I've got to, have I? I told you to get out. Out. Chief, oh. put this man on report for disobeying an order and take him down below. You bastard old retired prop! Hey, what's your order now? Next applicant. Oh, he's a gamer. Well, I don't know about game. He's mopped up my tobacco. Look at that. And when he comes up from Chokey, I'll give him a thump. I'm not about thumping him. What about using him? He might fit into our little scheme. Oh, no, I didn't mind mm. it. I go to work on the screw when he comes. You try to get the mugs for him ourselves. Paint off that. I tucked I want taken down as Which is what we were saying, sir, mocking up our tobacco. If you put him an asshole when he comes up from Chilke, we'll kick his teeth in. You're gonna have a new cellmate. Look at that. I ain't hanging around outside Nick's. Makes you feel superstitious like, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know what you mean. I always get the feeling if you go and visit someone, you end up walking around and remind yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I knew a fellow once. Oh, oh no, he knew oh. a fella. Hang on, Barbara. Yeah, I knew a fellow once. He said, tell after his old woman. I'll be home just after five, he says. He was home after five, all right? Five years and a nick. Yeah, do you know what happened? Right. I'll tell you. He come here to visit one of his mates, see? And when he come out, the cop was nicked him, didn't he? One of the screws inside had been ear wigging, and he got his collar felt. Charming. Isn't it all right? Mother got the keepers crazy. Eat it from a Randall present. Mother's got the keepers crazy. She will never let a chance go by. 
done a stretching pen and built some other bought a screw. She gave him ten a week and told him all he'd got to do. The Hilton couldn't ever beat the service that he gave. He brought the papers every day and old squad for me shape. So mother got the geezer straightened, eating from her hand or threatened. Mother's got the geezer straightened, she will never let a child go by. Hey, Rosa, did you see him then? No, why not? He said he was down in the punishment cells and couldn't have no visits. Oh, blimey, I've done it up a mug, hasn't he? Yeah. First he gets himself nicked for nothing, then he can't even keep his nose clean while he's inside, can he? Yes. Yeah. Hello, Danny, it's come... I ain't no peace on this earth. Tony, where's my tea? Coming, they'll be. Just getting some aspirin for your new soul, mate. You sell me, eh? Hey? hey, you. What's your name? Lee. Danny Lee. You're the one that killed the screw. Uh, I didn't ever mean to. Have you got any stout? Yeah, hang on. I'll sling some across. Right. Charlie, where's my bloody tea? All right, Bobby. I'll go and get it now. Come on, Now that he's gone, hey, tell me, why did you kill the screw? I don't know. I suppose I must have hit him too hard. Yeah, I must be crazy. But if you're not crazy, do you know what they'll do to you? They'll put you in a condemned cell for three clear Sundays. That's the law. Then they'll thrush you up like a chicken. The hangman hits you over the head with a sack full of crap and throws you down, down the hall. And that dirty big screw swings onto your feet and gives your neck an extra jerk. But it'll cure my pox. There ain't no peace on this earth. I'd be better off to be dead. I think I'll strangle the hangman. No, I won't. I'll do it, Charlie. Charlie, where's my bloody tea? Hurry up, Charlie. Because when I've had my tea, I'm going to kill you. All right, son. Don't know what I'm saying. Charlie. You. Come and make my America. I'll keep your tea hot for you. Now, well, give us your mug, Nobby. I'm coming on, sir. Uh, uh, I'm going to kill him, Charlie. Uh, uh, because I had no peace on the turf. Come on, the devil. Uh, All right, take it easy. Take it easy. Steady. Uh, there you are. Yeah, it's coming up first thing after lunch, number one court. Yeah, my scheming. Oh, a proper mug is our Danny. First he gets himself off a stretch for nothing. Now he's up on a murder charge. My own flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah see that little bloke just got that one with glasses on. Gone around the corner. Well, he's awaiting jury. And he's on our Danny's jury. I've been on his tail. Well, boys, I've got to do something. He's one of our own, you know. Sink or swim. Even if I get my collar felt, I've got to help my Danny. Hello. Listen, Mar, we don't want you in the nick and all. Yeah, Mar, let me have a go at the keys. I'll straighten that up. No, no. You leave this to me. I'll do it my own way. You only mess it up. You smug me up. Come on, I've got to get rid of this stuff. Here, put those pussies away. You take my drawings, Jobs. We've been to Cannes and Nice. Nice. We don't ever mess about, you know. We stay in all the best places. The Carlton, Martinez. Well, Johnny has got a yacht tied up at the moment. Yeah. Looks like a big cabin cruiser, yeah. yeah. All the crew on half pay. <laughs> Words are in birth or something. Yeah, but I ain't no thief. I've never stolen nothing in my life. Well, it's about time you started, isn't it? I mean, it's not you in this game to do birth or nothing, you know. And the greatest crime is to get catch. It's funny you should say that. My ma always says that. Your ma? Why was your ma? What's your ma's name? They call her Pretty. Pretty Lee. Pretty Lee? I know Brittany Lee. Shit. Is that your ma? Yeah. She buys a bit of gear off all the oysters. Yeah, that's right. So you're oh, Brittany Lee's boy, eh? Yeah. Well, of course I can tell now. Cool. <laughs> Here. Now, fancy a boy of Brittany Lee doing half a stretch for nothing. Yeah. I bet she's choked. I'll bet she is double choked. Yeah, she ain't too pleased. Do you realise that if you'd have been working with us, you'd have had a few thousand quid for doing six months? Wouldn't you do six months for two thousand quid? I don't know. You would done. Tell us, what would you do if you had two thousand quid? Well, what would I do now? Well, I'd get rid of me barrow for a start. 
Then I think I'd buy myself a lorry in a caravan. Then in the summer, me and Rosa could graft all the fairs and the markets. Then in the winter, maybe we could get a stall down Portobello Market or go coaling. Six months, you'd serve four. That's £500 a month. That's £125 a week. That's more than some of them film stars yeah, get. Yeah, film stars money. That's how I many you're not in prison, you're working like. You've got to look at it like a job of work for 125 nickel a week. Why, Johnny and I worked out our wages last night. And we've earned more a week this year than the Lord Chief Justice. Yeah. All right, Bob, just a minute. Let's get down to brass tacks. Now, look, Danny, I want to talk to you. Now, you know all about me. You know I'm a man of my word, right? Now, you've heard all about honour amongst thieves, haven't you? Sir? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all cobblers. There's no honour amongst thieves. There's a lot of dodgy characters in the underworld I ain't all that proud to be king of, I tell you. But no one can't say nothing against me, because I'm rich. Now, I'm a man of my word, and I like you. I like your face. It's a pity in one way you go out six months before us, because when we go out of here, there'll be a nice big car waiting yeah. to take us down to the airport, then from the airport to Nice, where we'll pick up my yacht. You could be with us for £2,000 as well in your pocket. Ah, uh, that's it, that's it. Hey, we could make him second engineer. Sure. Me, second engineer? I don't know nothing about boats. The only boat I've ever been on was with Rosa. It was called the Jason Strip from Little Venice to Regent's Park, an old converted timber barge. <laughs> second engineer. You don't think we could make you a second engineer? Well, let me tell you a little story. Oh, Johnny and I had a right ticket once. We had 45 grand for our whack. What are you doing, son? Well, I want to... What's you know. the matter? You shy? <laughs> Any road, we decided to come on. Let's go out to Tangier and do a bit of smuggling, like. Now, Johnny bought a boat at Weymouth, then we had to find the crew. Are you listening to me? Yeah, go on. Now, now, the first engineer had 17 convictions for screwing, and the only boat he'd been on was the ferry from Southampton to Parkhurst, Star of White. Uh, hey, and that's all over about the captain, eh, Johnny? The captain. He'd learned the art of navigation out of a magazine called Yachting Monthly. <laughs> so I think we could make a second engineer out of you. Yeah, it is true on that occasion they slung us out of time, dear. Bloody cheek. Mind you, we're not going to do nothing crooked this time. <sighs> With the hope of thy grace to offend thee no more, and carefully to avoid the occasions of sin. Good. Yeah. Now, miseriata tuus omnipotens deus et omnipotens spicatus tuus per duca te et vitam eternam, amen. In nomine patri et filia spiritu sancti. God bless you, Danny. Well, now, Danny, I hope you feel better. Have you, have you got your rosary? Have you, have you got your rosary, your rosary beads? Uh, no, Father, I lost them when I was a kid. Oh. Well, then, you better take mine. There you are. Oh. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I shall ask the bishop to come and confirm. And tomorrow morning I shall be here myself at seven to say mass. So, Danny, keep your heart up. And goodbye till then. Goodbye, Father. All right, Danny boy. There's a letter for you. It's just come. Oh. <coughs> I can't read, Gov. Can you read it for me? Hmm. It's a summons to appear in court on the 18th of March for obstruction with a barrow. Oh, that's tomorrow. It must be a good omen. Uh, well, would you write a nice letter to that magistrate for me, Gov? <coughs> now, let me see. Oh. Sir. I'm sorry I cannot appear tomorrow. I would very much like to come. Only I, I have an appointment with Mr. Ketch on Thursday and he might keep me hanging about. <laughs> if he don't, I'll pop down to see you, mate. Why, why not send my papers to Ms. Mr. Ketch? He loves me in at the kill. <laughs> From Sally Lee. Now listen, dearie, when Danny comes in, don't start crying. You only upset him. You tell him that we're going out tonight to get signatures for his reprieve. Tell him all the papers say he'll be reprieved. I want to go in there and kiss my Danny. He's my baby, you Sorry, know. Ma. Against he, the rules. He's always been a good son to his mum and given me money. Sorry, Ma. Here, don't you tell me I can't go in and kiss him. I'll oh, have to be I write to the Queen about you. Stinkers. Hello, sweetheart. Don't you look lovely, eh? Any news yet? Everybody thinks you'll get reprieved. We're going round the pubs tonight to try and get some more... Oh, you get in there, throw out your clothes and pick up a blanket. 
Right, next one. Right, on your way, on your way. Here you are, me old Chop Johnson. Oh, One travelling coat. My Charlie. Right, I'm up from Dartmoor for me visit. Yeah, you've got thinner lad. I never recognised you sitting down there. Was it 12 years since you went down to Moor? That's right. How are you getting on? Well, up and down, Tom, up and down. You know the trouble? It's hard to keep out of bother in the moor. Jesus Christ himself couldn't do that. Hey, Mr. Morgan, you remember I told you the one and only time I was on condemned cell duty? Yeah. About the prisoner who was reprieved the night before he was due to be topped? Yes, I remember. Well, here he is. Oh. Now you're done 12 years, eh? Yeah, I was reading in the papers the other day how you was the only life I left on a moor. That's right. One's gone back to the island, the other got a special after nine years. Have they fixed the date for your release yet? No, go for worse luck. Oh, oh, never mind, lad. You could be worse off, you know. Yeah, we had one fellow come into the condemned cell today. I think it's Larry. Ross his name, you know. Yeah, I've been following his case. He'd done a five on them all when I started my life. Well, lad, you must be tired. You had any dinner? Why don't you, Mr. Not Peeney? Bathhouse. Since you've seen London, I've brought these years. Fair broke me out travelling up here from Waterloo. Fish and chip shops, newspaper boys. We passed the pub, they were singing and dancing. Silly, I was glad to get in here. Do it a nice cup of tea, though. Cool. Uh, orderly, get him a pint of tea and put some sugar in it. I don't care where you get it from. As soon as said than done, Cuff. Huh? Here, lad, you sit down. I bet you're on the chief's office about you. I'm Mr. Morgan. You're getting the details on that tramp. Aye. Hello, chief's office. Our reception here, sir. Yeah, all correct. I've got a man here, sir, Michael Carney. Yeah, he's a lifer up from Dartmoor, lodging here for accumulated visits. Yes, sir, he's wearing prison clothes, Dartmoor type special. Shall I pass him straight through, sir? Oh, yes, of course. Right, sir. Right. Yeah, well, the chief can't see until tomorrow. But you can keep those clothes on, dine in the mess, or sleep over the hospital. I'll give you a pass. Now then. Here you go. I've got an old leg now and another rope. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Morgan, we'll have those receptions back from the bathhouse, if you please. Yeah, How you been getting on then, go? Well, I've had a bit of bad luck left. The old woman ran away. No. Yeah. I've been together for 15 years. Right, right, I don't know right. why. I never well, thumped her or nothing. Still, she might come back. Come on. Come on. All right, you lot. Line up over there. Well, a doctor will see you lot first thing tomorrow morning. Any complaints? Look what happened to him. He got topped at the bill for a hundred quid. And that was all through a grass. An informer. The awesome. Yeah, and I've got something to say to you. What? When you're licking your girl's ear in bed, don't go breathing no words down it. What? Many a good man has been topped for what he told a woman in bed. What, me? I don't never get a chance, Ma. Can't even get a job. Don't none of us have much time for courting, Ma. Thieving's a full-time occupation. Yeah, anybody seen my playboy? Where did you hoist this little lot from? It was strapped out on the carrier of an old Rolls-Royce that was parked outside of a booze in Belgrave Mews. Oh, I hope it don't belong to the mush who runs the place. I used to sell leather outside there years ago. He often slipped me half a dollar. No, Ma'am, it's one of them Belgrave burglars, you know, that wears jackets with splits up the back and all that and, and, and cavalry to all trousers, you know. Well, let's see what you've got. It's a pity you ain't got no pussies, because you know old Jim Lee? Oh, he's had a right tickle from some of his villainy. Mm. And he's going to buy his old woman a mink coat for a hundred quid. Mm. He's taking her to the Grove Hotel, the Showman's Guild, mm. on New Year's Eve. Mark, Mark we've earned ourselves a hundred quid. What about that then, eh? Hey. Oh, well, if you play your cards right, you'd have me tonight. Oh, <laughs> hey. I think this must have belonged to some film star. Smell smashing. Don't be silly, boy. Brassies smell lovely and they wear mink. Still, you've done all right there. Bad, is it? This is the real, genuine article. I'm proud of you. I am really, good. boys. Let's see what else you've got. Ooh, kite book. That ain't much good to you three, is it? You can't write. Never got a chance, did we? Always out on the wag for you. Well, I can print, Mark. They taught me to print at Borstal. I bet if I'd done a bit longer, I'd have learnt to write. Yeah. Do you think our Danny learned the right? No. Danny, oh my god, don't talk to me about Danny. What? First he gets himself six months for nothing, for chinning a copper, and then he pleads guilty. Yeah, that's true. Now listen, all of you. Never forget the 11th commandment. Oh, yeah. 
Thou shalt not plead guilty. Not even if you're banged to right. Yeah, who wants a Maryland cookie? Yeah, I'll have one. Yeah, here's one. We're three jolly screwsmen and Mar is our fence. Whenever we're late, she invents our defense. The jury she strengthens, the bogey she buys. But Danny pleads guilty, brings tears to her eyes. Say do em up, trim em up, dump em up, boys. Or we'll do em up, trim em up, dump em up, boys. Now I am a burglar as good as they come. And I am a creep who'll turn over a drum. I am a hoister so nimble and smart. But Danny, the state one has broken my heart. Shut up, good God. Hello, Abel. Hello, sir. Aye, aye, it comes troubling her out. So what? Uh, well, she might commit suicide. Oh, I'm sick and tired of listening to all this twaddle. Out! But, sir, you've got to let me see her. I've got to, have I? I told you to get out. Out, Chief, oh. put this man on report for disobeying an order and take him down below. You bastard old retired prop! I want you to allow me to leave the hopper and kill my girl, sir! I want to see my girl! Next, applicant. Get past him! Oh. He's a guy, man. Well, I don't know about him. He's mopped up my tobacco. Look at that. And when he comes off from Chokey, I'll give him a thump. I'm not about thumping him. What about using him? He might fit into our little scheme. Oh, no, I didn't mind it. I'll go to work on the screw when he comes. Yeah. Try to get the mugs for him out, Sal. Paint off that. That top guy won't take him down. That's just what we were saying, sir, mopping up our tobacco. If you put him an answer when he comes off from Chokey, we get his teeth in. You're going to have a new cellmate. Look at that. I ain't hanging around outside Nick's. Makes you feel superstitious, like, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know what you mean. I always get the feeling if you go and visit someone, you end up walking around and remind yourself. <laughs> Here, I knew a fellow once. Oh, oh no, he knew oh. a fellow. Hang on, Barbara. Yeah, I knew a fellow once who said tell after his old woman. I'll be home just after five, he says. He was home after five, all right? Five years in a nick. Sure. Here, do you know what happened? Right. I'll tell you. He come here to visit one of his mates, see? And when he come out, the cop was nicked him, didn't they? One of the screws inside had been earwigging, and he got his collar felt. Charming. Isn't it all right? Mother thought they keep us crazy. Eat it from a Randall Preston. Mother's got the keys to straighten. She will never let a chance go by. I done the stretch in Pentonville, some mother bought a screw. She gave him ten a week and told him all he got to do. The Hilton couldn't never beat the service that he gave. He brought the papers every day and old spot for me shape. Oh, mother got the geezer straightened. Eating from her and or threatened. Mother's got the geezer straightened. She will never let a child go by. Hey, Rosa, did you see him then? No. Why not? He said he was down in the punishment cells and couldn't have no visits. Oh, blimey, oh, Danny ain't up a mug, ain't he? Sure. First he gets himself nicked for nothing, then he can't even keep his nose clean while he's inside, can he? Yes. So Danny is convicted and they've taken him away To do his bit of birthing once for change and the man that runs the prison is a man called Johnny May, and he's the hardest man in all the trade. Two and a half furlongs to go, criminals are length in front. Oh, Jigamir, she think everyone in their nick is on that house today with a name like that. Oh, wait. Assault on the copper. Mm. What'd you get? Six months. Six months, eh? For nothing. You want to have material gain if you're going to come in here, son. They'll never come in for nothing. Yeah, that's it, material gain, that's it, material gain. You've got to make crime pay. But Johnny and me, I mean, we've done a few laggings, but we've got thousands stashed away. <laughs> we've been to Cannes and Nice. Nice. We don't ever mess about, you know. We stay in all the best places. The Carlton, Martinez. Well, Johnny has got a yacht tied up at the moment. Yeah. Looks like a big cabin crazy, yeah. yeah. All the crew on half pay. <laughs> We're doing birth for something. Yeah, but I ain't no thief. I've never stolen nothing in my life. Well, it's about time you started, isn't it? I mean, it's not you in this game to do birth for nothing, you know. And the greatest crime is to get catch. It's funny you should say that. My ma always says that. Your ma? Why was your ma? What's your ma's name? They call her Pretty. Pretty Lee. Pretty Lee? I know Pretty Lee. Shit. Is that your ma? Yeah. She buys a bit of gear off all the oysters. Yeah, that's right. So you're oh, Pretty Lee's boy, eh? Well, of course I can tell now. Cool. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, fancy a boy of Britty Lee doing half a stretch for nothing. Yeah. Well, I bet she's choked. I'll bet she is. Double choked. She ain't too pleased. Do you realize that if you'd have been working with us, you'd have had a few thousand quid for doing six months? Wouldn't you do six months for two thousand quid? I don't know. Yeah, you don't. Tell us, what would you do if you had two thousand quid? Well, what would I do now? Well, I'd get rid of me barrow for a start. Then I think I'd buy myself a lorry in a caravan. Then in the summer, me and Rosa could graft all the fairs and the markets. Then in the winter, maybe we could get a stall down Portobello Market or go coaling. Six months, you'd serve four. That's £500 a month. That's £125 a week. That's more than some of them film stars yeah, get. Yeah, film stars money. That's how I many you're not in prison, you're working like. You've got to look at it like a job of work for 125 nickel a week. Why, Johnny and I worked out our wages last night. And we've earned more a week this year than the Lord Chief Justice. Yeah. All right, Bob, just a minute. Let's get down to brass tacks. Now, look, Danny, I want to talk to you. Now, you know all about me. You know I'm a man of my word, right? Now, you've heard all about honour amongst thieves, haven't you? Yeah. Sir? Yeah. Well, that's all cobblers. There's no honour amongst thieves. There's a lot of dodgy characters in the underworld I ain't all that proud to be king of, I tell you. But no one can't say nothing against me, because I'm rich. Now, I'm a man of my word, and I like you. I like your face. It's a pity in one way you go out six months before us, because when we go out of here, there'll be a nice big car waiting yeah. to take us down to the airport, then from the airport to Nice, where we pick up my yacht. You could be with us for £2,000 as well in your pocket. Ah, uh, that's it, that's it. Hey, we could make him second engineer. Sure. Me, second engineer? I don't know nothing about boats. The only boat I've ever been on was with Rosa. It was called the Jason Strip from Little Venice to Regent's Park, an old converted timber barge. <laughs> second engineer. You don't think we could make you a second engineer? Well, let me tell you a little story. Oh, Johnny and I had a right ticket once. We had 45 grand for our whack. What are you doing, son? Well, I want to... What's you the know. matter? You shy? <laughs> Any road, we decided to be come on. Let's go out to Tangier and do a bit of smuggling night. Now, Johnny bought a boat at Weymouth. Then we had to find the crew. Are you listening to me? Yeah, go on. Huh? Now, the first engineer had 17 convictions for screwing, and the only boat he'd been on was the ferry from Southampton to Parkhead, Star of White. Hey, I'm... Homies, isn't it? Sorry, Homies. Hey, anyway, let's have a look. Hi, hi. Secret drinker. Jimmy, I've taken a bit of a Anyway, I'm not going to no party tonight. I've got to help my mum make up 20 reels by Monday. Oh, no, you go on your own. But if you were a man, you'd have to come out and help. Well, I ain't a man, and I'm going to enjoy myself before I marry you. Here you are, then. Three, four, right, right, sir. And here's your three and a good change. Lovely. Good on you. I don't take them. Come on, Emily, where you been? Oh, I've been up there, oh, been hanging about, and even you were hanging. Cheers, 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 cover. I'm not going to go off over there, you know. Look after yourself. Set out, then. Don't catch cover. Keith, yeah. It's all cobblers. More like four quid wrapped around a toilet roll. <laughs> that mob's from Oxford. Been working a free car trick in the market. What, what fun, lady? Yeah. Cool, I thought they went up, went up with Dickens. Not likely. Yeah. They were half Jamaica around here on a Saturday trying to find the lady. <laughs> well, that mob don't need any telling where to find the ladies on this map, <laughs> I'm round the other bar. Now looking for my friend. Oh, I don't give a damn who you're looking for. Round the other bar if you want a drink. I'll give me a drink. Now look, man, just don't push it. Round. Do you mind? Out. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Down the other bar. All right. Sir, yeah. I thought there was a colour bar in Notting Hill. Well, it ain't. But I can't serve black in this bar. I'd miss all lose all my respectable customers. You say respectable, Jimmy. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Tap. Lord help us, look who's just blown in. The wickedest copper in not in Dow, Mr. One a day. Now nah, leave off, Porky. He won't be happy until he's nicked one, and today it could be you. Nah, Give us the same. Tell him again, right? All right, what's it? Now I told you, Mob, to keep up this manner. If I see you on this manner again, I'll do the lot of you for sus. Keep your villainy to Oxton. With enough villains here as it is. Without immigrants, do you understand? Keep off my manner. Well, yes, yeah. boss. <laughs> <laughs> so you think that's clever, do you? But I ain't done nothing, Gov. I've got my barrow outside. I've just pushed it out of the stable with six cases of... Uh, take that smile off your face or I'll wipe it off for you. I should think so. <laughs> what are you doing? Get him out of here. You not get out of here. Get out of it, all of you. Get out of it. I ain't done nothing. You've knocked out the wickedest copper of the manor. He ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing. What have you got? It's about two ton of polish down there. You're gonna... How long did you get? Six months. Uh, two haircuts and a shave and you'll be out. Not worth coming in for. How do you mean? Have you been in before? No. 
What did you get done for? I ain't done nothing much. I pushed the copper off what was going to hit me. Would you mind? of cancer, and he's worked so hard all his life. Yeah, I'm sorry. Would you mind if I sat down beside you, sir? It's me knees, you see. I've got arthritis. I'm a cleaner, you see, sir, around the corner at St. Bart's Hospital. And, of course, I'm kneeling all day, and that don't help. This is me lunch hour. Have an apple? No, thank you. It's me tea. They're new, and they ain't settled in yet. Well, as I was saying, we never think of death, do we, sir? Not till it strikes our own. Now, my Bert, he's worked so hard as a cabinet maker all his life. Cabinet maker, eh? I'm a cabinet maker. Well, fancy that. Ain't it a small world? Have you got any children, sir? No. Wish I had. Not even married. Forty-five and still a bachelor. No one loves me. Oh, don't be silly. Your mother loves you. Oh, yes, she Oh, there's me. nothing like a mother's love, and she's always there to look after you. Yeah, I suppose you're right. She gets me sandwiches, makes sure I have two apples, gets me up for work at six, sees I go out every day. She thinks I've gone to work today. She doesn't know I've got to go across there on a jury at two o'clock. She's 78. I don't upset her. She's against these hangings, and I think she's right. Oh, I'm sure she is, sir. I'm sure she is. But if you ain't sure, there's only one thing you can do. What's that? You must talk the jury into finding your man not guilty. Mother's got the keys to Straighten. Eating from her You see that figure up there? Holding what they call the scales of justice. The what? They're the actual scales of justice. And do you know what she'd say if she could speak? She'd ask for the inspector of weights and measures. Them weights are very dodgy, sir. Mother got the keys to straighten. She will never let a chance go by. Are you Daniel Lee? Yes, Cap. Daniel Lee, you are charged with capital murder. The particulars being that you, on the 13th day of 1965 in the county of London, murdered Arthur Jackson. He being a prison officer acting in the course of his duty. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Well, I'm guilty in a way, Good but Daniel, it's, it's, it's guilty. not as simple as that. I didn't mean to kill him. Are you then pleading not guilty? No, I've done it, but it wasn't murder. You see, there, there was these two fellas. And Are I... you admitting that you struck Mr. Jackson? Yes, Gov. And when you struck Mr. Jackson, what did you mean to do to him? I wanted to do him up a bit. By that, I presume that you mean that you intended to injure him. Lay down that where the killer has inflicted grievous bodily... Find their nickies on that house today with a name like that? No, wait. It's Golden Salamba. That's better. Yeah, Golden Salamba's won it. Let's go for that. Good job, too. We stood to lose 40 ounces of snout if criminal had won. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, hope they're not going to stick a tramp in this pizza with us tonight. I wish they'd transfer one of them birds from Holloway. <laughs> That'd do me. Get away, you can't make love on porridge. Hello, hello, getting all serious like you blokes make me laugh. Yeah, I was a new cellmate for you. He's been out in choking for a few days. You better have a talk with him, otherwise he'll lose a bit more emission. Up there, lad. Come. What's your name, son? Dan Lee. What's yours, mate? Mine? Johnny May. And this is Robbo. I'll go. Johnny May? The king of the underworld? That's what the papers say. Anyway, never mind about that, son. How long have you been down Chokey? Uh, three days number one, seven days number two. I lost three days remission. What for, lad? Oh. My bird Rosa, see, she's in the family way. And I heard that she'd come up here to visit me. Well, they told her I couldn't have a visit for 28 days and they wouldn't let her see me. But when I saw the governor, I'd done me nut and called him a dirty, retired old puff. Yeah. He may be an old puff, but he's not retired. I remember him when he was housemaster at Postal. He's not on his own. I could tell you about a few tearaways who was puffs. Yeah. I caught a chib merchant banked the rights in his feeder one day. Anyway, son, why don't you write to your girl? Cheer her up. I'm not very good at reading or writing. Well, what'd you do down the punishment cells then if you can't read? Nothing. I only thought of my rosa all the time. I'm dead worried about her, what with her being in the family way and all. She ain't got no money and I think her old man will kick her out. Yeah, sir. Have a smoke. Tough. You mentioned money just now. Have you ever had two grand? Two thousand quid? Me? <laughs> 
20 pound weight of chestnuts about all I've ever had. What's the most money you've ever made, son? Uh, 12 quid, grafting the barrel on election day. 12 quid, eh? It's a diabolical liberty, you know. It's not fair. Some have plenty and some have nothing. What are you in for, son? Salt on the copper. Mm. What'd you get? Six months. Six months, eh? For nothing. You want to have material gain if you're going to come in here, son. Don't never come in for nothing. Yeah, that's it. Material gain, that's it. Material gain. You got to make crime pay. But Johnny and me, I mean, we've done a few laggings, but we got thousands stashed away. <laughs> we've been to Cannes and Nice. Nice. We don't ever mess about, you know. We stay in all the best places. The Carlton, Martinez. Well, Johnny has got a yacht tied up at the moment. Yeah. Looks like a big cabin cruiser, yeah. yeah. All the crew on our pay. <laughs> We're doing birth for something. Yeah, but I ain't no thief. I've never stolen nothing in my life. Well, it's about time you started, isn't it? I mean, it's not you in this game to do birth for nothing, you know, and the greatest crime is to get catch. It's funny you should say that. My ma always says that. Your ma? Why, well, who's your ma? What's your ma's name? They call her Britty. Britty Lee. Britty Lee? I know Britty Lee. Shit. Is that your ma? Yeah. She buys a bit of gear off all the oysters. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. So you're oh, Britty well, Lee. You know, boy, yeah. Eh? Well, yeah, I know what you mean. I always get the feeling if you go and visit someone, you end up walking around on your mind yourself. <laughs> Here, I knew a fellow once. Oh, no, he knew a fellow. Hang on, Barbara. Yeah, I knew a fellow once who said, Tada, to his old woman. I'll be home just after five, he says. He was home after five, all right? Five years in a nick. Yeah, do you know what happened? Right. I'll tell you. He come here to visit one of his mates, see? And when he come out, the cop was nicked him, didn't he? One of the screws inside had been earwigging, and he got his collar felt. Charming. Yeah, all right. Mother thought they gave us Grayson. Never let a chance go by. Yeah. I done a stretch in Pentonville, some mother bought a screw. She gave him ten a week and told him all he got to do. The Hilton couldn't ever beat the service that he gave. He brought the papers every day and old squad for me shape. Oh, mother got the geezer straightened, eating from her and or threatened. Mother's got a geezer straightened, she will never let a chance go by. Rosa. Did you see him then? No. Why not? He said he was down in the punishment cells and couldn't have no visits. Oh, blimey. Oh, Danny ain't up a mug, ain't he? No. First he gets himself nicked for nothing, then he can't even keep his nose clean while he's inside, can he? Yes. So Danny is convicted and they've taken him away to do his bit of birds in one for the prison is a man called Johnny May, and he's the hardest man in all the day. Two and a half furlongs to go, criminals are length in front. Oh, Jigger, you think everyone in their nick is on that house today with a name like that? Oh, wait. It's Golden Salamba. That's better. Yeah, Golden Salamba's won it. Let's go to that. Good job, too. We stood to lose 40 ounces of snout if criminal had won. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, hope they're not going to stick a tramp in this pizza with us tonight. I wish they'd transfer one of them birds from Holloway. That'd do me. Get away, you can't make love on porridge. Hello, hello. Getting all studious like you blokes make me laugh. Yeah, I was a new cellmate for you. He's been out in Chokey for a few days. You better have a talk with him, otherwise he'll lose a bit more emission. Up there, lad. Come. What's your name, son? Dan Lee. What's yours, mate? Mine? Johnny May. And this is Robbo. I'll go. Johnny May? The king of the underworld? That's what the papers say. Anyway, never mind about that, son. How long have you been down Chokey? Three days. Ask for the inspector of weights and measures. Them weights are very dodgy, sir. Mother got the deed to straighten. She will never let a chance go by. Are you Daniel Lee? Yes, Gov. Daniel Lee. You are charged with capital murder. The particulars being that you, on the 13th day of 1965 in the county of London, murdered Arthur Jackson, he being a prison officer acting in the course of his duty. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Well, I'm guilty in a way, Good but Daniel, it's, please, 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 it's please. not as simple as that. I didn't mean to kill him. Are you then pleading not guilty? No, I've done it, but it wasn't murder. You see, there, there was these two fellas, and Are I... Are you admitting that you struck Mr. Jackson? 
Yes, Governor. And when you struck Mr. Jackson, what did you mean to do to him? I wanted to do him up a bit. By that, I presume that you mean that you intended to injure him. Lay down that where the killer has inflicted grievous bodily harm at his victim by a voluntary act which causes the death of the victim and which was intended to cause grievous bodily harm, and there exists implied malice which constitutes malice of forethought and which accordingly renders a killing murder. Understand My Lord, yes. He's told me repeatedly that he has no desire to deceive the court by telling lies and that accordingly he wishes to plead guilty. I have explained to him the full implications of such a plea. Only one sentence in this case, that you suffer death in the manner authorized by law. So be it. Oh, treat his son this Danny now is in the condensed cell, waiting for the morning he must die. Keep healthy hours passing by the tolling of the bell, and before him sees the grave where he will lie. I'm very happy to see you again, Danny. Would you mind? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Well, Danny, how are you? Well, Father, I don't really know. <laughs> I wanted to see you because I'm so worried about Rosa. Yes? She's having the baby soon. Well, yes. My old mum don't like her much and the screws in here are a lot of mugs. Yes. I, I wanted you to help. Well, is she a Catholic? Yes, Father. Well, where are you going to marry her in the Catholic Church? Well, Father, we hadn't really thought about anything like that. Mm -hmm. You see, <clears throat> none of us had much schooling and my old mum didn't think much of it and I never thought much about it myself until now. Yes. Well, most people, Danny, turn to God du during suffering. Now, w have you received the sacrament recently? <laughs> it's ten years, Father. I I've not been to confession or communion mm -hmm. since I was a little kid. Well, would you like me to come and say Mass in here tomorrow morning? Oh, Danny! Rosa must wait in Nottingdale for all it Before I come to Nottingdale, Ketch must draw his fee. A widow ere she was a bride, her tears her Not a jerk. Not a jerk. Oh, lovely, Charlie. Let's have old Willie up and try again, eh? Yeah. I'll close the trap. Hey, give us an out with, with old Willie, then, fellas. Ta. That's it. Ta. Got you. Come on, Charlie, hurry up. Now, the anti hanging bell for them. That's it. Ah, uh, great. Now, look. In future, a line to tie that knot a little bit tighter on the left of the jaw. Because yeah. the dislocation of the vertebrae without decapitation depends on the tightening of that knot on the left lower jaw. Yeah, gotcha. How all do right. you feel, Charlie? Well, I'm all right, thanks, Albert, but uh, I'd rather be down old uh, Brand's ash on me motorbike, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, come on, when you take over from me, which God willing won't be very long now, I want you to be the finest angler in the world, as befits my future son-in-law. From the cell to the trap shouldn't take more than 12 seconds. Yeah. And don't forget that left lower jaw. Right. If you give him one inch more of the rope, I'll pull his bloody head off. Gotcha. We don't have any Nuremberg's here, do we? Eh? Hey? Well, of course, Charlie, you wouldn't remember that, would you? You're only a lad at the time. No, well, what happened to Nuremberg then, uh, Albert? Well, there was 26 top German brass to be topped. They gave the job to some yank who didn't know the secret of the left lower jaw. Oh, I see, yeah. Bloody amateurs. Didn't you see the photographs of the Time magazine, Charlie? No, Albert. What happened? Oh, enough to make you weak, believe me. Should have given the job to an Englishman. Best man in the world. I want you to do the rest of the lot when I retire. And, uh, what? Make you to a secret. I'm getting nearly 30,000 pounds for my story from this Sunday. Uh, cool, how about that then? Oh, good evening, Doctor, sir. Oh, good evening, Albert. Glad to introduce my future son-in-law, Charlie Smith. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, sir? Well, how's the old ticker, Albert? Oh, not too bad, not too bad, sir. Uh, touch of wood. <laughs> and the wife, uh, still getting that arthritis in her back? Oh, no, no, she's lovely, thank you. 
Charlie is a bit nervous. Tomorrow morning is the first time he's helping me. <laughs> There's no reprieve, I suppose. No, the uh, Home Office issued their final statement this afternoon with no possible ground. La, 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 and yet I know she'll be outside the Not a jerk. Not a jerk. Oh, lovely, Charlie. Let's have old Willie up and try again, eh? Yeah. I'll close the trap. Are you going to out with, with old Willie, then, fellas? So. That's it. So. Got you. Come on, Charlie, hurry up. Now, the hand, the hand getting bills for them. That's it. Ah, great. Now, look. In future, I like to tie that knot a little bit tighter on the left of the jaw. Because yeah. the dislocation of the vertebrae without decapitation depends on the tightening of that knot on the left lower jaw. Yeah, gotcha. How all do right. you feel, Charlie? Well, I'm all right, thanks, Albert, but uh, I'd rather be down old uh, Brand's ash on me motorbike, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, come on, when you take over from me, which God willing won't be very long now, I want you to be the finest angler in the world, as befits my future son-in-law. From the cell to the trap shouldn't take more than 12 seconds. Yeah. And don't forget that left lower jaw. Right. If you give him one inch more of the rope, I'll pull his bloody head off. Gotcha. We don't want any Nuremberg's here, do we? Eh? Well, of course, Charlie, you wouldn't remember that, would you? You're only a lad at the time. No, well, what happened to Nuremberg then, uh, Albert? Well, there was 26 top German brass to be topped. They gave the job to some yank who didn't know the secret of the left lower jaw. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, bloody amateurs. Didn't you see the photograph in the Time magazine, Joe? Oh, Albert, what happened? Oh, enough to make you weak, believe me. Should have given the job to an Englishman. Best angler in the world. I want you to do the rest of the lot when I retire. And, uh, oh, what? Make you to a secret. I'm getting nearly £30,000 for my story from this Sunday. Uh, cool, how about that then? Oh, good evening, Doctor, sir. Oh, good evening, Albert. Glad to introduce my future son in law, Charlie Smith. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, sir? Well, how's the old ticker, Albert? Oh, not too bad, not too bad, sir. Uh, touch of wood. <laughs> and the wife, uh, still getting that arthritis, isn't it? Oh, no, no, she's lovely, thank you. Charlie is a bit nervous. Tomorrow morning's the first time he's helping me. <laughs> There's no reprieve, I suppose. No, the uh, Home Office issued their final statement this afternoon with no possible grounds, anyway. Oh, good. We don't want to come all this way for nothing, do we? <laughs> This man we're hanging in the morning, I've got his particulars here. Weight, 11 stone, 6 pound, is that right? That's right, Alan. Yeah, any peculiarities or deformities, any false teeth? No, it's a dead simple job for him. Mm. Will there be any trouble? Well, could be. He's a rough type, you know. I'm going to give him a sedative tonight. Oh, yeah. He appears to be all up and down since his last visit. Fell happened with his old mother. Uh, anyway, Albert, uh, I'm just away. Uh, see you in the morning. Uh, good night. Good night. Cheerio, nice. Doc. See him in the morning, all right. He's a nice enough fellow, our doctor, you know, but uh, he's nearly always half drunk to an execution. You're joking. He once told me he couldn't come to the execution yet unless he had three large scotches for breakfast. I can't believe it. It's a funny thing, that, isn't it? Squeamish. I don't need that, Charlie, neither will you. Come down here to do a job like any other. Look. So wait for me for Rosa she Have a couple of days, make you feel good. Oh. What's the time, Robert? Hey, I'll have a deco. How can he tell the time looking out there? Well, dead on eight o'clock every night as a bird over there gets undressed. It's a screw's wife or daughter. She gives us a flash, but she don't know it. <laughs> Is she about? About? Oh, she isn't half about. Dear me, she hasn't half got some form. God, they get on my bristles. <laughs> well, never mind about that. We'll have enough time to think about that when we get out of here. Right, Arthur! Right, Arthur! Right, 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 right. In a few minutes, the screw will be round slopping out. Robbo, we won't use the leg of the chair. I'll show for the cosh. Hey, Joe! Send down my line. Put old Bill on it. Hey, are, Danny. Old Bill. Danny, when you get out in the morning, don't forget to go and see my old mother. Okay, mate. 
He'll see his old woman all right. She's a right tartar. I wonder who's sleeping in my bed tonight. Listen to that, Muggy. His old woman couldn't sleep straight in my bed. Never mind, be straight to it. Cut the bunny of you here in a minute. Go on, son, get your pot. Hey, don't forget, when he comes, punch me hard as you can in the mood and kick Rob over in the cobblers. <laughs> Any he stops? Hey! Hey, a lively! Hey! Quick up, get all of this, please! Oh, oh, these two's up here! Oh! Quick! Push the lively, isn't he? No, he's done! Oh. I think he's done his stuff! Get him out! Show him here with that cush! Help him out, quick! Oh. Come on, lively, get up off the floor, you're all right. Now listen, when they ask, you say Danny's been acting very strange and muttering and talking to himself. What? Oh, they won't leave us alone in here for too long in case we turn queer. Oh, he's ruining me for life. Bit of luck will be out of here in a few weeks. Oh, Michael Carney, sir. Lifer. Thanks. Michael Carney, life. Further Dartmoor reprieved. His temporary transfer to your establishment for compassionate reasons. Assist this.